Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is story about what if Nagato gives Naruto the revered Senju bloodline of Mokuten. Part 1 Before I start, please do support for more amazing content and comments for part 2. Do consider to subscribe my channel and share my video to your friends and check out the description as well. Let's start the video. I think I understand Naruto. Nagato said these words to our favorite blonde ninja who had just defeated him. Naruto had used the powerful sensory abilities of the Senenmodo, Sage Mode, to locate him, and asked him his story and told his own, and told him how there is still hope, and how Jirei was, and how Nagato lost himself to darkness, and became pain. Standing beside him, his friend Conan watched the boy change Nagato, and a feeling of familiarity washed over her, she could almost see a hiko in him. Her thoughts were broken as Nagato spoke. Naruto, I have made my mistakes, and I hope to correct them, I will revive the villagers and give you a parting gift, and I will pray that you succeed in which I failed, Yuhiko failed, and Jiraiya sensei failed. Conan knew what Nagato was going to do and voiced her thoughts Nagato. You can't, it will kill you, if the first doesn't then second surely will. She couldn't lose Nagato, he was everything to her since Yuhiko's death, and doing something like this with his current chakra levels will surely kill him and leave her alone. No Conan, I have made many mistakes and taken many lives, this is my only chance at redemption, and I must do it. Nagato said this and put his hands in a ram hand seal and said Jito. Rin Tensei no Jutsu, Outer Path. Samsara of Heavenly Life Technique. Curiosity got the better of Naruto, and he asked what is happening. Conan answered Nagato is the seventh pain, therefore he is outside the Samsara, cycle of death and rebirth, and he has control over life and death. Naruto was shocked, Nagato can control the lives of people. Suddenly from his collar, a slug appeared and said the villagers are being revived. Naruto now knew what Nagato was doing, he was reviving the villagers he killed in the attack. He saw as Nagato's appearance changed. His ribs were clearly visible, and his hair turned white and he was heavily panting. He released the jutsu and collapsed to the ground beside Conan, who was helping him sit straight. He looked at Naruto and again held up the ram seal and said faintly, Jito. Tsukai no Kaizo, Outer Path. Gift of the Bear. Suddenly, a beam shot out of his hands towards Naruto and white light enveloped him, and pain shot through Naruto's body, and he collapsed to his knees. It was only for a moment and Naruto could feel some changes in his chakra, he decided that he would investigate that later. He stood up, looked at Nagato and asked him, what did you do? Nagato smiled and said, an. Three dots mean panting, this jutsu allows me to give someone a keke jinkai, I just gave you the power of Mokuten to say Naruto was shocked was an understatement, he had seen Yamato sensei do Mokuten and heard about the battle prowess of the Shadai Hokage, Senju Hashirama, due to his Mokuten. He looked at Nagato with shock written over his face and said thank you Nagato, I will make sure I use your gift to the fullest. Nagato smiled and nodded acknowledging Naruto's thanks, he knew he did not have much time left and looked up at Conan and said Conan you were always there by my side and never left me for that I thank you make sure you help Naruto the best you can, with that Nagato closed his eyes and went into eternal slumber, but not before watching Conan with tears in her eyes and not telling him that she will do just as he had said. Naruto stood in front of Conan who had just wrapped up the body of Nagato in her papers and was wrapping the body of Diva Path too. He asked her you are taking him too. She looked at him and said this is Yuhiko someone very important to us Naruto looked at the half-wrapped body of Yuhiko, bowed and said a prayer. He looked up at Conan and asked what will you do now? Please tell me you are not returning to the Akatsuki. She looked at him shook her head and said Yuhiko and Nagato were my world, I was in Akatsuki because of them, I will leave Akatsuki now and return to AIM, stabilize things there and look after the people, that's the least I can do for them, and it's also my duty. Naruto looked at her and smiled and said don't worry, you will do a great job, and if you have any problem just tell me, the Uzumaki and Namika's clan funds rival that of the daimyos combined, they are bigger than that of the fire daimyo, after things stabilize, inform me, I will see if there can be a treaty between Kanaka and AIM. She looked at him smiled and replied, don't worry the funds from Hattori clan after Hanzo was killed are more than enough, as for the treaty, I will inform you at once. She then held out her hand formed a paper bouquet and gave it to Naruto and said, I will help you in this battle against hatred, but there is also something important I want to inform you about, when we were doing this movement at first, Hanzo supported us, but he was coaxed by one of your shinobi. I think his name was Shimura Danzo. He was there when Yuhiko was killed, and he attempted to kill Nagato with his Anbu type shinobi, who had a blank mask with kanji for no root on them. Anger brimmed within at Naruto when he heard this, he did not know much about Danzo, but the fact that he wanted to turn him into a mindless weapon no was denied by Jiji every time. He looked up at Conan and said, thanks for telling me this, I will give him a chance just like Nagato, and then see what happens. She nodded and waved her goodbye carrying the bodies of Nagato and Yuhiko. Naruto looked at the bouquet, and a memory of Jureya came back to him. 
Naruto and Jiraiya sat under a tree in their own thoughts, and Naruto said Sasuke said he was gonna sever his bond with me and become stronger, and that I was never gonna understand him. He then looked up at Jiraiya and said hey, you were friends with Orochimaru way back. Right Irosenin. Why did he desert the village and decide to destroy Konoha? Jiraiya looked down at his godson, sighed, looked up at the sky, and said Orochimaru went through a profound change after both his parents were killed, and that's when he became obsessed with Kenjutsu. He looked down at his apprentice and said I don't know if he was trying to resurrect his parents or to wreak vengeance on the village that he held responsible for their deaths, a sad look came in his eye and he looked down and said my parents weren't killed, so he trailed off at this point, jumped down from the tree, sat beside Naruto, and said I was accused of not being able to understand anything about him or his feelings. He sighed again and continued perhaps he was right and I didn't understand a thing about him after all. He got up and walked up to wooden platform, sat down and continued again. Even I am able to see that there is entirely too much hate in this shinobi world of ours. Naruto looked up at him questioningly and said there's too much hate. Jiraiya looked at him and said ah, I've always wanted to do something about all this hatred, I'm just not quite sure how to go about it just yet, but I truly believe that eventually the day will come when all people will understand one another and live in harmony. Naruto said oh, it sounds kinda complicated to me Jiraiya replied, and if I can't find a solution to this problem, then perhaps I will entrust you to find it instead I, Naruto. Naruto looked up at him and said hi hi, I can't turn down a request from my sensei Kanairo Senen. Jiraiya upon listening this started laughing, this earned a glare from Naruto who asked Nani, what the hell is so funny about this hero senin? Jiraiya replied, your smile is my salvation Naruto, I am very glad I made you my student. Naruto looked at him with one of his true smiles and asked ya. Yeah, you really are. Jiraiya nodded and said, but I haven't given up on doing it myself just yet you know. Naruto tilted his head to his left side and said huh. Jiraiya said I still plan to change this world. He then did his dramatic pose with one of his book in his hand and said with my books. Naruto deadpanned and said do you mean the books which don't sell Jiraiya scowled and said fool. They will be best sellers before you know it and when the day finally arrives. I will not sign your copies even if you begged me to Naruto continued his deadpan expression and said I don't want your stupid autograph anyway. He leaned against the tree with his hand behind his head, closed his eyes and gave one of his true smiles and continued, I don't want that anyway. He opened his eyes and his eyes watered before he said cuz you gave me something much more valuable at this. A lone tear escaped his and Jiraiya's eye. Naruto shed a lone tear and smiled and looked up to the sky, I will find a way to remove this hatred Jiraiya sensei, Nagato, Tuchan, Jiji, Mayabakizen, Mount Mayaboku. It's over as it was foretold, said the great toad elder Gamamaru, who was tending to an injured Gamabunta. What? Asked Gamabunta back. It's over Bunta, Naruto succeeded. He answered with a smile on his face. Gamabunta smiled at the news of Naruto's success. First it was Jiraiya, then Minato, I wonder how you will hold up compared to those two. Naruto was returning back to Konoha, but he was utterly exhausted, his legs betrayed him as started falling, but the impact never came, he opened his eyes and said Kakashi sensei. Kakashi gave one of his eye smiles and said rest up Naruto, you did great Naruto smiled and did so, but he suddenly remembered something and asked Kakashi sensei, what do you know about Danzo, please tell me everything, he was partly responsible for this attack, and destruction of Konoha Kakashi was shocked and looked at Naruto, he knew that something was done by Danzo when he met the blonde's gaze and saw how confident he was, he then enlightened Naruto on Danzo, he told him everything about his ways, root, disbanding of root, suspicions of root still running, his ideals, his rivalry with the Sandame, and his bad mouthing of Sandame's ideals. Naruto felt his anger brim up again when he heard all of this, but decided that he will give Danzo a chance, because no matter what, Danzo is still powerful, and if was the Sandame's rival, that he is no joke, and working together with him, will bear more results than working against him, and causing a rift in the village. Enter Naruto Os departure to the front lines. When he arrived at the village, he saw a sight that he never expected, civilians and shinobi were there cheering for him him. Of all people. Then he heard what people were saying. Welcome back, you are a hero, we believed in you, thank you. The slug came out of his collared jacket and said I told them everything that happened, they have been waiting for your return. Upon watching this, a Kakashi had a flashback to the day when he asked his team about their dreams. My dream is to be the Hokage. That way everyone will acknowledge my existence. Naruto you did it, you changed the hearts of people, you showed them the true you, you made them acknowledge you. He watched as Naruto made his way to them and was surrounded by kids who were questioning him about the enemy and asking him other questions. Naruto saw Sakura come out of the crowd towards him, he said Sakura-chan she stopped in front of him as tears fell out of her eyes as she ran up to Naruto and hugged him as he was her lifeline. 
don't ever scare me like that you baka, I thought you were dead, do you know how much scared I became Naruto was surprised by this, Sakura had never shown him love and affection like this, let alone cry for him, he brought his hands up and embraced her and whispered into her ear, don't worry Sakura-chan, I am back, I am sorry for making you worry like that, I let my anger get better of me, but don't worry, I am back for you, Sakura felt heat rise up to her cheeks when she heard that but ignored it, she let go of Naruto and kissed him on the cheek, both of them blushed at this, as this was happening, Kiba was whining about becoming stronger, Shino was pointing him out at every point, Niji and Tenten stood there in awe of Naruto, as they heard how he fought the person who destroyed the whole village with one jutsu, Lee was ranting about how Naruto's flames of youth burned brightly for defeating such a opponent in a youthful way, and said Yosh, I will run 100 laps around Kanoha for my eternal rival, and if I fail he trailed off as he was bonked on the head by Tenten, who said Lee don't ruin the moment. Shikamaru thought you troublesome bastard you did it, Choji said Naruto has really left us behind, he really did it, man we have trained twice as hard now, Ino said dreamily I may fall for him, which caused the other two male members of her team to look at him in surprise. Meanwhile Hinata watched the exchange between Naruto and Sakura with jealousy and narrowed eyes and thought now that I have made my move on Naruto-kun, she wants him. In the back Aruka watched his student in pride along with Konohamaru and Ibisu, Konohamaru wanted to go and congratulate his Naruto Nai-chan, but was stopped by Aruka, who was telling him along with Ibisu how Naruto never gave up and how he changed everyone's opinion of him, how people started to care about him and how he finally got what he wanted. Then Naruto asked departure to the front lines. Naruto from the corner of his eyes watched an Anbu member come and say something to Shikaku which caused him to leave. This did not go unnoticed by Kakashi who looked at the blonde and nodded, and both of them took off to the emergency council room in the head of the Nidame Hokage. Emergency War Council Room. The daimyo sat in the middle of the table on his large chair, which had a kanji for fire, K, on the top, signifying that he was the daimyo for Hai no Kuni, Fire Country. To his left were his five advisors, who along with the daimyo, had a papers in front of them regarding the damages, the expenses and the budget. To his right were the five most important people on the Kanoha Council. The first was Yudatain Kaharu who was a village elder, teammate of the now deceased Sandame and student of the Nidame, she was a part of the original Team 7, continuing was her other teammate Mitakoto Himura, another village elder and member of the original Team 7, next was Shimura Danzo, another village elder and leader of the supposedly disbanded root division of the Anbu. Next the commander of the Ansatsu Senjutsu Takushu Butai, Anbu, he is currently wearing a yellow full body cloak and has an Inu dog mask on his face, next to him is Nara Shikaku, the head of the famed Nara clan and the Jonin commander of Kanahagakura no Sato. There was a silence in the room for two minutes until Hamura broke the silence Daimyo-sama, we still plan on working with the other countries to deal with the terrorist threat known as Akatsuki as we along with Kumo are the only countries who still have their Jinchuriki, so we may be attacked again. Danzo did not like the current topic at hand and decided to intervene, that currently is not our main concern. With Tsunade-sama's coma, we don't know when she will be back to full strength again, I say we have to nominate a new Hokage. So it has already come to this, thought Shikaku as he eyed Danzo, he knew that this would happen given Danzo's ambition and ways over the years. The Haru decided to add her two cents I agree with Danzo Daimyo-sama, as it is partly Tsunade-sama's fault for the condition the village is in. The Daimyo covered his mouth and nose with his fan in front and met, I would have preferred Jureya-chan to be the Rocky Dame, good and happy lad, but sadly he died over a month ago. Shikaku noticed the gleam in Danzo's eye as Danzo opened his mouth to say something but Shikaku decided to intervene, I nominate Hata Kakashi. Outside the room, Kakashi's lone eye widened as he heard himself being nominated. He looked at Naruto who smiled his true smile and said, don't get surprised sensei, you have earned it, you are arguably the most famous ninja, except for the cages, strong, smart and value teamwork, not to mention you are the last surviving student of Tuchan Kakashi's eye widened even further, but then he gave Naruto one of his eye smiles and decided to ask about it later. Naruto continued but sorry sensei, I will nominate myself and get this village back on track, but you will be my second in command, and there is one more thing sensei hearing Naruto's serious tone, he concentrated fully on the blonde and gave him the nod to continue Nagato, it was the real name of pain not only revived the villagers, but also gave me a keke genkai with the help of his rinnegan, he gave me Mokuten. Kakashi was in utter shock, Mokuten was the most revered Kekei Genkai in the world, and the only one which can match the powers of the Sharingan I plan to use it to deceive the elders and the daimyo, but I ask you to keep quiet about it, if a little deceiving can stop Danzo, then I will do it, Kakashi was shocked and proud of the maturity Naruto was showing, he was protecting Konoha in every way he can and was showing the signs of a great leader. He couldn't help but smile Minato-sensei, Kishina-sama, you will be proud of how much Naruto has grown, and he turned his attention back to the inside of the room. 
inside the room, Sandane was wrong in his teachings, his teachings are the reason Kanoha is in the state today, we need a ruthless leader who can the necessary steps, and that is me. I nominate Danzo was stopped as the door to the room kicked open to reveal Kakashi and Naruto leaning against the door with a smile on their faces. The Anbu commander who had detected them had a smirk behind his mask and thought if you are here for what I think you are, then we will be saved and I will fully support you Uzumaki Naruto. Amura stood up and said what are you doing here? This place is off limits for both of you. Naruto replied forgive us Hamura-san, but we came to show Danzo who is wrong in which teachings and came with proof for crimes that Danzo has committed. Upon hearing this the daimyo got interested and said oh, I would like to hear the crimes Danzo has committed, but who might know you two gentlemen? Both of them straightened up and bowed I am Hada Kakashi Daimyo-sama and I am Namaka's Uzumaki Naruto Daimyo-sama. Every eye except Kakashi and Shikaku widened upon hearing this who had smirks on their faces, Shikaku fueled the fire he is saying the truth Daimyo-sama, he is the son of our beloved late Yandame-sama Namaka's Minato, and also the last of the royal Uzumaki line of the Izushi Agakur, as he is the son of Yuzu Oho, Whirlpool Princess, Uzumaki Kashina, the Akai Chishio no Habanero. The advisors, elders except Danzo and the Anbu Hanchu, commander, paled upon Upon hearing the last moniker as they knew Kashina as someone not to meddle with, as she was arguably the best Kanoichi only behind Senju Tsunade and Yuzumaki Mido, the Anbu commander, because he had worked with her and participate in her tour training sessions time to time. The daimyo's eyebrows shot up behind his fan hearing this and said so you young man are the Kanoha no Ayu, hero of Kanoha, I have been hearing about, your actions are not surprising given your heritage. I remember Arashi, Naruto's grandfather, and Kashina, most energetic people I have ever seen and your father, most down-to-earth and humble man I have ever seen, I heard that you are the one who keeps the Kaiubi at bay, and that you grew up alone, I have letters and pictures of your parents, I will possibly send them over to you when I return back to my palace. I am honored Daimyo-sama, but the reason I have come here is to protect Kanoha against the schemes of a warmongering madman, he pointed at Danzo at this, and before Danzo can say anything he continued Daimyo-sama, Danzo said that Sandame sama Sama's ideals were foolish and naive, but he is blatantly lying. Sandame Sama's ideals were the ones that he inherited from Shadame Sama and Nidame Sama and passed on to his students Jureya Sensei and Gadame Sama, Jureya Sensei passed on his ideals to Yandame Sama and me. These ideals of high no ishi, will of fire, are not weak, instead they are the ones which give us the power. He was interrupted by Danzo who snorted and said, see what I am talking about Daimyo Sama, his ideals are weak, a shinobi who can't kill is not a shinobi. He was interrupted again by Naruto who then explained about his talk with a man named Nagato, and told the how because of his ideals Kakashi and others villagers were alive, and said that if I had followed Danzo's ideals, then we would have been burying instead of celebrating, and that seemed to do the trick. The daimyo and his advisors were impressed by this, and Danzo was sneering because he had lost the hookage position once again to a Siratobi's pawn. The daimyo chuckled and asked Anbu Hanchu, Narasan, what do you think about young Naruto-sen here? Seeing that where this was going, Shikaku said I see what you are asking about daimyo-sama and fully support your choice, this boy here has the experience, the heritage and the power to stand up to this position and lead our village, no one is a better leader than him, he can turn the darkest of situations into the brightest ones, he puts his comrades before him, he is ready to sacrifice himself for the sake of his comrades, I Jonin commander of Kanoha on behalf of all the Jonin, Chunin, Takubetsu Jonin and Gen and support Namaka's Uzumaki Naruto as the Rakudame Hokage. What? You can't do this, he is merely 16 years old, he was the dead last of his academy, and he failed the graduation exam two times, retorted Kaharu who nearly yelled all of this. Before anyone could say anything, the Anbu commander calmly responded, I find that to be the half-truth Elder San, I have seen his original academy records, he was about to graduate in his first year as the rookie of the year, his education was sabotaged, given that he enrolled two years before the normal age, makes this more interesting. He was able to outrun me and my best men at the age of eight. He painted the Hokage monument in broad daylight in an orange jumpsuit without anyone noticing. He beat the Hyuga prodigy in the Chunin exams. He also defeated the current Kazakiage in the last invasion, and recently beat the man who defeated Godame Sama and killed Jureya Sama, and destroyed the Hu village using one jutsu, and he has also mastered Senenmoto. The feat achieved by only the Shadai Hokage, even Jureya Sama was not able to do so. If you want his qualities, then Jonin Hanchu and I can go on and form a nearly endless list. Naruto looked at both the commanders and gave them an appreciative nod which they returned. The daimyo then stood up and walked up to Naruto and placed a hand on his shoulder and said Namaka's Uzumaki Naruto, do you accept the position as the Rakudame Hokage of Kanahagakur no Sado? 
Naruto looked at the man with determination in his eyes, bowed and said hi, Daimyo-sama, though I request you to instate me as Uzumaki Naruto. I don't want to reveal my heritage just yet, as it could cause some problems, and with the village's current state, I think this is the best. The daimyo nodded and removed his hand from his shoulder and said very well, then I daimyo of Hai no Kuni appoint you Uzumaki Naruto as the Rakudame Hokage of Kanahagakur no Sato. Afterwards Naruto was quickly introduced by the daimyo to the council members as the new Hokage. Despite still recovering from their shock the council members clapped for Naruto, everyone except for the old war hawk, Danzo stayed silent during the rest of the ordeal, as he carefully hid his emotions, instead he eerily watched and listened to the rest of the council meeting. But all of this now over and behind us, I am happy to say that Kanoha now welcomes a new age, with the reign of the Rakudame Hokage, with a new Hokage in Kanoha, the village must celebrate this momentous occasion, said the daimyo quite eagerly. I agree Daimyo-sama, we must have a formal induction and announcement soon for the people, the induction of our new Hokage could increase the current morale of the people of Konoha, answered the elderly Hamura. Excellent, we must prepare for momentous occasion. I believe we could prepare the village within three days for the celebration. The Daimyo said as the Konoha representatives nodded their heads. He then looked at Naruto, as for your induction into office, I will need you to write a speech, will you need anything for your induction ceremony? He continued as he directed his attention to the whiskered young man, Naruto shook his head. Very well Hokage-sama, three days from now I expect you all prepared for the induction ceremony, I need Anbu to call in the whole population of Konoha to watch in front of the Hokage's tower, as Uzumaki-san is announced at Tsunade-chan's successor. We will also keep the purpose of the event a secret, and nobody shall know about Naruto's induction until the day itself ordered the daimyo, everyone in the room nodded their heads. Now if there is nothing else then everyone is dismissed said the daimyo, as the council members all began to stand up from their seats one by one, Danzo was the first to get up, but before he could walk away, Naruto said Shimura Danzo, I want to talk to you in my office once I am instated as Hokage Danzo glared at Naruto, but still nodded and left. Soon the representatives of Konoha also left, the elders Kaharu and Hamura were the first to leave, but before then they extended their congratulations to Naruto, during that small conversation, they also formally introduced themselves as the Hokage's personal advisors. Next was the Anbu commander, the masked man congratulated him for his promotion as well. But before the commander left he ran one thing over the newly inducted Hokage. Hokage-sama, before I leave I must inform you of the customary four-man Anbu bodyguard squad designated to protect him, he told the young man. Of course, tell me about this bodyguard squad Hanchu. Naruto ordered as the commander nodded. Okajama, it is required for the Hokage to be guarded at all times, and so due to this the Hokage is given two certain bodyguard groups, the Hokage Guard Platoon and the four-man Anbu Bodyguard Quad. The four-man Anbu squad dedicated to your protection, they include among the best Anbu has to offer, and they will act as your shadow, they are assigned to protect you through the shadows, and their area of protection is around Kanoha's premises, especially within the tower. They also act as messengers and also bodyguards for the Hokage's family he explained as Naruto nodded impressed over the security of the Hokage. Tell me more about my own squad Hanchu. Well unfortunately with a new Hokage comes a new squad and with that I must recruit your new team for you, hopefully I will have them by in a few days, replied the commander stoically. Of course, I look forward to meet my team, Arigato Hanchu Naruto replied back as the commander bowed and vanished via plume of smoke. Now the last remaining people in the council room were Naruto, Kakashi and Shikaku, the Jonin commander also made his way to Naruto with a small smile on his face, as he too placed a hand on the young man's broad shoulder, he only had one simple message for his son's friend. Congratulations kid, Minato would be proud of you, in some ways you remind me of your father he said before walking out of the room, Naruto nodded this acknowledgement. So, what do you plan to do now, Hokage-sama? Kakashi asked with a smirk behind his mask with grew as he watched Naruto's left brow which violently, as he groaned and replied cut the crap sensei, only during official times you have to call me that not when we are alone, but for now, let's head back to the office and wait for Danzo, I am sure he must be planning something. Naruto stood in his watching the mountains of paperwork on his desk, Kakashi had a shit-eating smirk on his face, but was shocked as he saw Naruto make 10 cage bunshin and give the paperwork to them, Naruto saw Kakashi and replied with a smug smirk of his own, he then summoned Fukasaku and Shima, the two toads popped up next to Naruto, and he went on to explain the situation to the two of them. Both were pleasantly surprised to hear how Naruto was named the Rakudame Hokage. But the real reason Naruto called them was to ask for help concerning a new outfit, Naruto decided that since he was now being chosen as Hokage, he also needed a new change of clothes to signify a change in him, it was time for him to mature and grow up if he were to lead the whole village. The two toads smiled at the sight of an all-orange Hokage, but they shook their heads from that thought, Naruto instead explained to both Fukasaku and Shima the type of materials he will need and the new clothes he will need for his induction as Hokage. 
The two toads were more than happy to help Naruto, soon both returned to Mount Mayaboku to prepare Naruto's new outfit. Once again Naruto was left to his own thoughts, he continued to watch the village through the large window. Gureya sensei Hokage Jiji, Tu-chan, if only you could see me now. I will make you all proud he silently thought to himself before deciding to enjoy the view and watch the sunset over his home, the home he would now lead, protect and fight for as Hokage. Unknown Akatsuki hideout within a dark and damp cave a man resembling a Venus flytrap sprouted out from the ground, the man wore a black robe with red clothes, and upon arriving in the area, he noticed two other men wearing the same outfit. Zetsu, you have finally arrived. Now tell me of Pain and Konoha. Demanded a man wearing an orange spiral mask. The one known as Zetsu then recognized the two, the first was Madara Ichiha, while the second more silent one in the back who resembled a shark was Kisum Hashigaki. Zetsu nodded and approached the two, he then gave them a detailed report about the battle which took place in Konoha, along with the events which transpired after the battle. By the end of it all both Madara and Kisum were bewildered by the fact that Pain was defeated, and by Naruto no less. Madara also grit his teeth at the loss of two more members within the organization, Pain had died restoring the lives he killed in Konoha, while Konan defected from the group. What of the Hokage? Madara asked suddenly. But the god aim in a coma, I heard rumors that there is going to be a new Hokage, I delved a little deeper, and the fingers all point towards Danzo, we have reason to suspect that Danzo may be the Rakudame Hokage, Madara-sama answered Zetsu calmly. Knowing the man I wouldn't be surprised if he was chosen, Madara muttered as he massaged his temples, I must admit, this Naruto kid is becoming more and more of a pain in my backside, he has constantly put a wrench in our plans, or at least tried he continued. Huffing in annoyance, Madara attempted to calm himself to make rational decisions concerning the following days, since it was becoming apparent that his plans were not coming along as smoothly as he would have liked. After compassing himself, Madara looked towards his two recruits. This am I need you to go and hunt down the Hachibi, you must succeed where Sasuke and his team failed, as for you Zetsu I need you to return to Konoha and continue your spying on the Hokage matter, I need to know who is chosen, he ordered with authority, as both Akatsuki members nodded and disappeared just as quickly to do as they were told. As Madara was the last one remaining inside the secret cave he decided his next course of actions, the Ichiha sighed as he thought to him it appears I need to have a small family reunion. With that in his mind he too vanished using his Jikiken ninjutsu to form a portal to transport himself from one place to another. Hinoha, it was early in the afternoon and we see our hero, the new Hokage Naruto Uzumaki, quickly make his way towards the Hokage's office to meet with the daimyo and elders, the moment for his induction was close at hand. On his way there he was greeted by numerous civilians and ninjas, as the new hero and Kanoha everyone clamored to the young man. As he walked towards his office, he also noticed the people of Konoha being told by Anbu to gather in front of the Hokage Tower, one of the few remaining structures which remained after Payne's attack. He heard that the people were being called for an important announcement, he overheard people whisper, wonder and murmur what this special announcement was about, and he smiled, these people were in for the shock of their lives he thought. After a while Naruto managed to arrive just in time in his new office, upon entering he saw the elders Himura and Kaharu, with the exception of Danzo, the two were patiently standing in a corner patiently waiting for him. Also in the office were other council members from the day before, Danzo, and the advisors were not present, but the Anbu commander, Jonin commander and Fire Daimyo were. As he entered he was personally greeted by each of them, they exchanged formal handshakes and congratulatory greetings. Before continuing he excused himself from the office to finally change into his new outfit. He then left the office and headed to a private room to change, upon finding a vacant room within the large tower. As he entered the room he summoned both Fukasaku and Shima. Hello again Fukasaku-sama, Shima-sama, do you two have the clothes I asked for? He questioned the two toads. Of course Naruto-chan, you better appreciate how long it took me to make this for you on such short notice, Shima said with mock annoyance, as she handed him a storage scroll containing the clothes she carefully made for Naruto's induction ceremony. Arigato Shima-sama, Fukasaku-sama. I'm sorry I made the request on such short notice he said while rubbing the back of his head sheepishly. No worries Naruto-chan, now go on and get changed already she ordered, Naruto smiled and gave the two toads a mock salute before changing into his new clothes. As Naruto opened the storage scroll and released the stored items he couldn't help but admire the clothes they made for him. He reluctantly tossed aside his trusty orange jumpsuit and replaced it with his new attire, once he was finished changing he walked in front of the mirror. I look so cool he inwardly squealed as he finally got a closer look on his outfit. As he looked at himself he studied every single part of his clothes and he smiled, both Fukasaku and Shima really did him a solid. He now wore a black high-neck t-shirt with a single white stripe down the middle, 
baggy gray ninja pants tucked into his black sandals, bandages and a kunai and shuriken holster on his right thigh, a few injutsu kid and scroll on his right hip and a medical kid on his left hip, which were covered by his orange heiori, with black flames on the bottom, and rakidame hokage written in black. The heiori was short-sleeved and had black flames on each sleeve, the heiori had a string holding it, and finally his ninja headband holding his hair in his place, he put the shadow clone summoning scroll on his back in honor of Jiraiya. Sitting behind Naruto, both toads were amazed and astounded by the physical similarities Naruto holds with his father, with his new outfit, he could easily be mistaken for the Yandame. Thank you for everything Naruto told both toads with a large smile on his face, the two toads smiled back at Naruto, it was no problem Naruto-chan, congratulations on everything you've accomplished you deserve it, replied Fukasaku. By the way Naruto-chan when your induction begins the other toads are also going to arrive, Gamma Bunta, Gamma Kin, Gamma Hero and the others wish to witness another toad summoner be named Hokushima said, as Naruto glanced their direction. That would be great, I wouldn't be in the position I was had it not been for you guys, and frankly, Gamma Bunta has saved my life countless time, so it would be an honor if he could be here Naruto answered back. With everything now ready for Naruto he decided it was almost time for his speech, he decided to return to his office, but before then Fukasaku and Shima returned to Mount Mayaboku to rally the toads to Konoha in order to watch Naruto's induction as Hokage. The Hokage now re-entered his office, upon seeing his new clothes the eyes of the daimyo and elders widened, for the daimyo he could see that Naruto bore a striking resemblance with one of his predecessors, the Yandame Hokage, but given how he was his father, it was no surprise. The group then waited patiently for the people of Kanoha to gather in front of the tower, after a few minutes an Anbu member arrived, and he looked at the new Hokage in surprise, before he compassed himself once more, everything is set, and the people have been called to the front of the tower Daimyo-sama he said. Excellent, shall we begin? Asked a Daimyo as the ninjas and Kanoha representatives nodded, the group of six then walked up of the stair to reach the top of the tower, the area in which the Hokage usually gives speeches to the people of Kanoha, from the five Naruto was asked to stand by the door where he could not be seen by the crowd, they asked him to wait before he was introduced as Hokage. Naruto nodded obediently and watched as the Daimyo stood in the middle of the tower balcony, to his left were Kaharu and Hamura, and to his right were the Jonin and Anbu commanders. As the daimyo walked to the front of the balcony, the crowd suddenly went silence, all signs of whispers, murmurs and chatting all ceased as their daimyo prepared to address the crowd. People of Kanoha, I come before you today full of pride and joy, a new age dawns in Kanoha, and we are here lucky enough to witness it. Unfortunately the past few days have not been kind to Kanoha, but rest assured, I will do everything I can to help with the reconstruction of the village he declared proudly causing the crowd to clap and cheer for him. Unfortunately however we also hold bad news. From the most recent attack our Godame Hokage was left in a coma, and she does not appear to be waking up any time soon, however with the bad comes the good, and we found a way to fix this problem quite quickly. We managed to find a more than worthy successor for Tsunade's position of Hokage, admitted the daimyo, as the people of Kanoha ceased their clapping, most of them adopting widened eyes, rather than just cheering there were now gasps and murmurs around the crowd. Everyone was whispering with one another, all of them wondering who their next Hokage was. As the daimyo saw this he smiled, he absolutely loved the suspense of the induction, and before he decided to name the Hokage, he shushed everyone in order for all of them to divert their attention towards himself. The candidate we chose is a noble man who has proven himself to be more than worthy of the position. He is a hero of Kanoha, and I am from what I could tell he seems to be destined for the position he continued, before gazing upon the elderly man beside him, Hamura, in order to be handed the Hokage's hat. The daimyo then held the Hokage's hat, he was now close to bestowing it upon Naruto, he decided it was time to show the village the face of their new leader, and without further ado I now introduce to you all to the Rakudame Hokage of Kanoha, Yuzumaki Naruto he said, the villagers were silent upon hearing this declaration, their hero was now also their leader. Asps could be heard all around the area, and most people were dead still, Naruto presumed that was his cue, he made his way towards the daimyo as he was handed the hat. He grabbed it with his right hand and placed it on his head, the five other people occupying the front of the balcony stood back as Naruto decided to take the podium. From the crowds all eyes were focused on their new Hokage, the older generations of Kanoha were rubbing their eyes, they believed it was as if they have seen a ghost. Upon seeing Naruto in that manner they were reminded of a figure in the past, in Naruto they saw the Yandame Hokage. From Naruto's point of view the crowd was still speechless, he smiled as he looked from left to right. I am Yuzumaki Naruto, the Rakudame Hokage of Kanahagakur no Sato he yelled to the top of his lungs, and as he screamed that to the heavens the crowd burst and erupted with cheers, chants, songs and claps. The village celebrated their new hero, their new Hokage. As his cage bunshin were doing his paperwork, Naruto was sitting beside Tsunade and had tears flowing down his eyes, Sakura and Shizun were saddened watching the happy to go ninja breaking down like this. 
I am sorry, I was not able to come at the right time and save you, please hold on. After Jiraiya Sensei, I can't handle losing you too Kachan Shizun and Sakura were surprised when they heard Naruto calling Tsunade Kachan, but given their relationship, they knew that it was not surprising for the blonde to call her that. Sakura watched her friend crying and walked up to him and embraced him and whispered into his ear, don't Naruto-kun, you are not at fault, the summoning toad was killed by someone and it was their fault, also Tsunade-sama did what she had to do as a hokage and saved her people, she has a major case of chakra exhaustion and due to this, she has gone into a coma, it will take her roughly 3-4 to four weeks to recover and wake up if my and Shizun's predictions are correct, Naruto looked up at Sakura, smiled, nodded and wiped his tears. He then stood up and said Sakura-chan, please come to the Hokage's training ground behind the Hokage monument at 7am tomorrow, we will train together, and there is something else I need to talk to you about Sakura nodded as Naruto left the tent to go to meet Kakashi and Yamato. Kakashi and Yamato were sitting and talking about Naruto, Kakashi told him about the Mokuten, and Yamato agreed to help Naruto and went to fetch the scroll that Danzo gave him about Mokuten, he came back to see that Naruto was walking towards them. Naruto came up to Yamato and Kakashi and said Yamato-sensei, I presume Kakashi-sensei has told you about the Mokuten. Yamato replied of course Naruto, but before you start on your Mokuten, meditate and see the changes in your chakra, also here, take this chakra paper and see the results now. Naruto took the chakra paper and the change was seen, the paper split into three parts, one crumbled to dirt, one became wet and disintegrated because of being wet, small pieces of both of them fell on the ground and merged to form a small bonsai-sized tree. But what happened to the last piece was not expected by anyone, it burned in Naruto's hands, showing that Naruto has three new affinities, a strong Doten and Suetan affinity and a regular Katen affinity. They got over their shock, and Kakashi said well, Naruto, you hold you title of number one unpredictable ninja true, due to your Mokuten, you have affinities to both Doten and Suetan, but it seems that you have developed an affinity for fire as well, given your wind affinity, it is surprising but not shocking, and the way the paper reacted, it seems that you have a strong affinity to both Doten and Suetan, probably due to the fact that you got these from the Rinnegan, which gives the holder a high affinity to all elements. Naruto himself got over the shock and said it's good, because we are in the high no kuni, fire country, I can master the three stages of fire manipulation, and Gara gave me a scroll which had the last stage of wind manipulation, as for water manipulation, I am sure the Nidame Hokage had left some scrolls for the same purpose, the only problem is earth manipulation which I can master only two stages, and will have to look for ways to find the last stage or find and do it myself. Bakashi once again smiled and was proud of Naruto's intelligence and maturity and said do you plan to learn Doten and Suetan Jutsus as well or are you doing this to improve your Mokuten? Naruto gave him a deadpan expression and replied seriously sensei, by this time, you should have known me, but I will learn only the defensive Jutsus and some offensive Jutsus from Doten, but as for Suetan, I will completely master it like the Nidame Hokage, his cage bunshin are a real blessing. Yes, you are right, but for now, first meditate and get familiar with your chakra and tell me where to come for your training ordered Kakashi. I'm at the Hokage's training grounds at 7am and by 7am I mean 7am tomorrow, but for now, I will meditate and get used to my chakra said Naruto as he leapt off to Team 7's training grounds to meditate. Naruto is meditating and is observing the changes in his chakra, earlier his chakra was thick dark blue colored, unlike other people who had light blue colored, which showed that his chakra was more potent than others and had bits of the Kaiubis, and there was sharp chakra which was Futon chakra flowing through, but now, his chakra was dark purple, showing that it was more potent than before, and had Doten and Suetan chakra, which seemed to merge and was showing signs of life, but he also found that now, the Kaiubis chakra was lesser than before probably due to rebuilding and strengthening of the seal but also had burning chakra flowing through. He opened his eyes and appeared in front of the ever-beloved cage with kanji for seal on the bars. So you have come again pathetic ninjin, what is it this time? Asked the mountain tall biju which was currently lying down and probably in a nap. Nothing Kaiubi, just wanted to ask you if you knew about these changes in my chakra and my katan affinity. What makes you think that I know about these changes? Answered the biju. Don't act like that, I was exposed to eight, nearly nine tails of your chakra, and you want to say that it had no effect on my body said Naruto. The Kaiubi chuckled and replied I see that you have become more intelligent and smarter, as for these changes, yes your chakra was growing in potency every day, about time it became this potent, now your chakra is most potent and it can't get any more potent now, as for your Katen affinity, I am a fire and wind spirit, when that pathetic father of yours sealed me into you, you got a high affinity to wind as a side effect, this Katen affinity is the same, a side effect of you being exposed to too much of my unfiltered chakra, you have not changed physically much, except for the fact that you are a bit taller. 
but the main changes are that now you have enhanced senses, more than that of your mutt friend, you have become smarter, and you have gained the ability to sense negative emotions, the highest level of sensory ninja, only one other person had this ability. Naruto was surprised when he heard all of this, and decided to test it out later, but decided to talk to the Kaiubi about the real reason he came here for. He sat down and said now tell me what's your story, Kaiubi. What story? The Kaiubi asked with narrowed eyes. Naruto had a small smile on his face and said still stubborn, like pain, I want to know what's your story, what made you hate humans, not all humans are bad, and why did you attack Konoha on my day of birth? The Kaiubi answered what makes you think that I will tell you that pathetic ninja. Probably the fact that we are stuck together till death, but there is something else, I was not able to save Sasuke from darkness and hatred, but there is still a chance, I want to see what I can do about your hatred, Kaiubi answered Naruto. The Kaiubi tried to sense any lie or deceit behind his words, but found none, his eyes widened, and thought he is genuine, he really wishes to do so, not even Hashirama was like this, let me tell him my story, and see what he plans to do further, if his goals are genuine, then I will help him, maybe I can trust one last time Jiji. The Kaiubi stood up, walked to his his cage bars, sat down and started to tell his story to Naruto. How he was formed from the Juubi by Rakotu Senen. How he was asked to guard the Fire Temple in High no Kuni. How people started to come to him to steal his power, Ichiha Madara, his battle against the Shadai Hokage, his sealing into Mido, resealing into his mother, and the events of his day of birth. When he finished, he sensed different emotions coming from Naruto, which were happiness, hope and sadness. You are not wrong Kaiubi, you have been wronged multiple times, have had your trust broken multiple times, and you have been caged for nearly a century, yet you decided to live away from the humans instead of destroying us, that shows that you have kindness in your heart, if you deem me worthy of your trust, then you can work together with me to stop the cycle of hatred, but if you don't, then I won't blame you. No matter how hard the Kaiubi tried, he was not able to sense any deceit from his words, but decided to ask him one last question to see whether he was worthy of his power or not. Once all of this over and the Biju are freed, what will you do with us? Naruto smiled and replied I will convince all of the nations and tell them the truth, but the fact that Biju were originally free will help me a lot, if they don't understand and would still like to make you weapons, then it's simple he had a look of a true shinobi in his eyes, which were also burning with determination, and said I will kill them. The old generation will be replaced by the new who will be taught the right things and ideals, but I don't believe anyone to be fool enough to still consider you guys to be weapons, after explaining your birth, purpose and the shit you all have been through. Iwubi was now sure that the person that Hagoromo talked about all those years ago was standing before him, he smiled as he remembered Hagoromo and felt the similarities between Naruto and Hagoromo. He remembered his last talk to Hagoromo all those centuries ago. The Rikodu Senen at Sutsuki Hagoromo stood in the middle surrounding him were the Biju when they were a lot smaller, there were two lit candles by his side. He was looking towards the Kaiubi and said I don't have much time anymore. Shukaku, Matatabi, Esobu, Son Goku, Kakuo, Seiken, Jimei, Jayuki, Kurama. Even though you have been separated, you shall always be together. Until eventually that time shall come when you will become one you each carry a name, and with a different shape than you had up to now, you will be shown a righteous path, different from the time you spent inside of me. What is true power until that time Kurama upon hearing this was crying as he was the oldest of the Biju, and shared a special bond with Hagoromo. It's been too long Jiji thought Kurama as he smiled and remembered his last talk with his creator. He looked towards Naruto and said you have shown me that you are worthy Naruto, I have watched your life every moment until now, and I admire you for your never give up attitude, I will help you, and I place my full trust in you, but I want to help you not as your biju, but as your friend and partner. Naruto smiled and stood up to walk towards the cage and said I expect no less, Air can you tell me your name please, the Ichibi has one, and so I figured out that you will also have one. My name is Kurama, but due to this seal, I can give you only one tail worth of power. But I didn't plan to give you more at this time, when the time comes, you will have to separate my chakra from me, because my chakra is infused with my rage and hatred, and it also affects you when you use it, after that I will have to recover for a month to regain my chakra, then we can train on making you get used to my chakra and other things, hold out your fist ate Kurama as he held out his fist from between the bars towards Naruto. Naruto did the same as they fist bumped, and Naruto felt a surge of power coursing through his veins. Kurama added now you have got another ability, since the Juubi had Shizen energy, nature energy, as its source, I also have the ability to gather and use Shizen energy, now as my host, your ability to gather the same has increased, the time needed for you to do that is now reduced, wait, as you are in me, were you the one who pushed out Fukasaku-sama earlier when he tried to fuse with me? Asked a curious Naruto. Kurama grinned and answered of course, I pushed the Dargeezer out, besides you had my power what did you need sage mode for? Naruto grinned mischievously and said you arrogant team. 
Karama appeared in front of the cage and shouted shut up you naive fool, don't forget that I am the strongest of the biju, not even a minute, and you are making fun of me like you think you can. I love you too Karama said Naruto as he disappeared from the mindscape and appeared in the real world. He looked around as he saw the sun going down and decided to tell Kakashi and Yamato about this. He got up but got another idea, instead he made two cage bunshin and told them to tell Kakashi and Yamato to come to the Hokage Tower. Naruto was sitting in his office, organizing the memory of his clones and talking to Kurama about his chakra control and Jinjutsus while waiting for Kakashi and Yamato. He saw as they entered the office and told them to sit down and explained everything to them except for Kaiubi's name. Kakashi after listening this had a thoughtful expression as he placed a hand on his chin thinking about something and said Naruto, to fully master you Biju's power, you will have to talk to the Reikage about this, Jinchuriki have to go a special place to master their Biju's power, and only Kumo know about that place, that's why only their Jinchuriki are perfect Jinchuriki. Naruto frowned upon this, Kanoha was not on the best relations with Kumo since the Hayuga incident, but decided to think about that later. He then looked at Yamato and asked Yamato-sensei, do you have the scroll that Shadai sama left, Yamato nodded and pulled out a scroll and gave it Naruto who made a cage bunshin to do the rest. He then walked up to the portrait of the Nidame Hokage, bit this thumb to draw out blood and swiped it across the portrait, the blood glowed and a clicking sound was made as the portrait opened like a door, inside were three scrolls with kanji for water, four on them, he opened the first one and said well, looks like Nidame Sama himself made these exercise for anyone wanting to achieve perfect suetin manipulation, I have to say, if the first exercise is like this, then I don't know what the third one will be like. Curiosity got the better of Kakashi and he asked what's the first exercise Naruto. Generally, it is to soak a leaf with water with just your chakra, much like futon manipulation. It says here that the first exercise is to reverse the flow of water in a river for several minutes, he unrolled the second and third scroll, read them and said, the second stage is to make whirlpools in water and hold them for several minutes, and the third exercise is to reverse the flow of a waterfall for several minutes. After that it's just more practice to achieve perfect suetin manipulation, where one will be able to draw water from the surroundings in mere seconds, control the flow of water according to their will, and perform the hardest of techniques with a single or half-hand seal. The Kashis and Yamato's eye widened when they heard this, such level of mastery over an element was truly worthy of the title cage, Kakashi then said for a normal person, it would take their lifetime to gain such mastery, but with the help of your cage bunshin, I expect that it will take one to two months to do so, and another two months to get the perfect mastery, as for your doten training, you will have to do the standard exercises only which should be finished in two to three weeks, I say that you learn some necessary jutsus from Yamato, and after one month, you can start to work on higher mokuten techniques, your katen manipulation will also be completed in two months, and just like suetin, in four months, you will have the mastery of katen techniques techniques just like a Chihamadara, and your last stage of futon manipulation should be completed in three weeks, and you will have the full mastery in about two months. Full mastery of three elements and mastery of another, truly worthy of being called a cage, after that I can help you in rate and manipulation, but only after you have fully mastered your three elements and completed the exercises for the fourth, not to mention you will be working with the Kaiubi which will help you in your Jinjutsu as well, you will become a true powerhouse Naruto. Yes, I was just talking to him before you came here, he said that because he was meddling with my chakra earlier, I did not have good control. But now, I have good enough chakra control to perform lower and middle level irio ninjutsu, medical techniques, and perform a rank jinjutsus, he said that I can improve my control, but due to my massive and ever-growing reserves, the highest I can hope is to get her high level irio ninjutsu techniques and be ranked jinjutsus, but I will have to work on chakra control nearly every day to first achieve, then maintain it, until my reserves are fully matured, which happens at 25 years of age, so I will leave them be, I will still work on chakra control to maintain it from time to time though. Man, I can't wait to learn Kachan's super strength. Said Naruto getting surprised looks from Kakashi and Yamato, who were thinking about when he said Kachan, but got to know that he said that for Tsunade, but both had the same thoughts his chakra control was this bad from the start because of the Kaiubi, if he had not been affected and trained from the start, then he would have had perfect chakra control now. Naruto then said Kakashi sensei, tomorrow's training is cancelled, I will start to work on elemental manipulation, once I have settled things within Konoha, for now, I will train only in Irio Ninjutsu, Fuinjutsu and Senjutsu, which will be with Kaiubi, also, after things are settled, I will start to work on that Jutsu. Kakashi looked surprised and asked which Jutsu Naruto. Naruto just smirked and replied the one that gave birth to the Kiroi Senko, Yellow Flash. 
Naruto had to exert all of his willpower to not to laugh his ass off when he looked at the expressions of Kakashi and Yamato who were in utter surprise and shock, Kakashi, still in shock said and then Naruto, you know how dangerous it could be to even attempt that without proper physical speed, you and Jutsu knowledge and notes, I forbid you to attempt that Jutsu until you have brought your speed up to mark, become a level 9 seal master, and until you obtain Minato sensei's notes, Naruto pouted and said you are no fun sensei. I will have to search for two chans the cage bunch in Naruto, a sign to read the scroll poofed as the scroll dropped onto the table. Naruto walked up to his father's portrait and did the same procedure as the portrait opened, inside were four scrolls, two with an amicus clan crest on them, which was a white circle outline with a purple lily in the circle. He took the one with the clan crest, opened it, and saw that it was a record of the businesses, bank accounts, land assets and the money in the Namaka's clan, he saw that since his father's death, the Yamanaka clan was the one that was handling the businesses, he decided to discuss more about that later with Yamanaka and Oichi. He opened the second one which was a letter from his father. Dear Naruto, if you are reading this letter, then the worst has happened, and I have ended up sealing the Kaiubi into you, and your mother is also dead. My Sachi, forgive me for the life I am cursing you to, but as the Hokage, I have no other choice, you will not get love in your life, and will have it worse than your mother and Mido-sama. Maybe it's because I believe that the villagers will look past their hatred and treat you fairly. Let me tell you about our clan, we were mostly businessmen, but even if there were less shinobi, all of them were geniuses in their own right, just like the Ichiha clan were associated with Katen, we were associated with Raiden, I built the library of our home in my head in the Hokage Mountain, just in case something happened and our house was destroyed, the scrolls, kimonos, katanas, akudos and a special armor that your mother brought from Yuzushio are also there. You might be wondering what happened to our clan, just like the Senjus many of us died without heirs, and the Shinobis were usually Kia, till the time I was 14, I was the only remaining member of our clan just like your mother. Our clan was like the Yamanaka clan, we were associated with flowers and dakijutsu, poison techniques, and due to our similarities, we had an agreement for the next 50 years, which stated that in case any clan was to wipe out, the other would take care of the other's assets and businesses. Don't get scared, I have told Anoichi, and he said that he will do so until Sandame Sama or the current Hokage deems you ready, if you are my and your mother's son, then you might be reading this as the Hokage, surpassing your old man Asachi. I think you know the reason you were not told of this earlier, I requested Sandame Sama not to tell you about your mother until you are Chunin and about me until you are Jonin. I know that if there is anyone who can surpass me and learn to use the power of the Kaiubi, it's you. As the least thing a parent can do, I trust you Naruto and I love you my Sachi. Your father, Namakiz Minato, Yandame Hokage and Konoha no Kiroi Senko, Yellow Flash of Konoha. P.S. The other two scrolls contain my notes about the Rasengan and Horation. Naruto was feeling something in his heart as he was reading the letter, he was not sure what it was as he never felt what it was. Kurama decided to enlighten him on this love said a voice inside his mind. What? Asked Naruto. The thing that you are feeling is love, you have never experienced it much in your life, so reading that letter of your father made you realize that there are people in this world who care about you, think about it, your small group, the Hokage, your sensei, the Raymond Stand people, the people you save, all of them love you and support you, and they will always protect you just like you would do it for them said Kurama. Naruto was shocked to the core, he never knew that all those people love him and truly care for him, tears threatened to fall from his eyes as he remembered all those times, he quickly wiped them and read the other two scrolls, and said well Kakashi sensei seems like you were right, I don't need the Rasengan notes anymore as I have only completed it, but need to work on my speed in Fuenjutsu, me and Sakura-chan will start tomorrow, I will also learn Iryo Ninjutsu from her, and continue my Senjutsu training with the Kaiubi, for now you can leave sensei. Kakashi smiled and left at once with Yamato as Naruto thought to himself looks like I have a forbidden scroll to visit, but not now tomorrow. With that Naruto went to his sleeping quarters in the Hokage mansion and went to sleep. The next day, one day till induction, Naruto was patiently waiting for Sakura at the Hokage's training grounds, while contemplating what he learned today in the morning in the forbidden scroll of Sealing Man, Mokuten sure is scary, so much potential also that Nidame Sama's Yinjutsu he sighed as he thought about it again. Sakura was on her way to the Hokage's training grounds, but was having an internal battle why did I kiss Naruto on the cheek yesterday? Because you feel for him don't you said inner Sakura woken up again as a result of Sakura's conflicted feelings. But what about Hinata, she confessed to him, don't you think he will act on that too? Said Sakura nearing the grounds. But you know what Sai told us, he loves us, and nothing is fair in the ninja world, much less love and war ranted inner Sakura. 
but now I think about it, he has always been there for me, even when Sasuke rejected me all those times, he promised me to bring back Sasuke even when it broke him, he truly cares for me and loves me, it's time I act upon these feelings and return them, I have to show him that I am no longer that Sasuke fangirl with no brain, I have grown up and I know what is good for me thought Sakura as she arrived at the training grounds and watched Naruto sitting there waiting for her. Go get your man girl said inner Sakura with a thumbs up sign. After today's training I will confront him about it thought Sakura as she made her way to Naruto, the training field was truly huge, it had trees, boulders and a waterfall to complement it. The heyo Naruto-kun said Sakura as she stopped in front of Naruto. Naruto, still not accustomed to Sakura calling him that looked up and said a heyo Sakura-chan. So what did you need me for? Asked Sakura. Before I start my training, I have a way to speed up our training, I will teach you the cage bunch and Sakura-chan said Naruto. Are you sure Naruto, only you have the potential and chakra reserves for that kind of training asked Sakura, a bit concerned. Naruto then proceeded to tell her about yesterday's events except the Hokage and Kaiubi's name part and told her that she has more than enough to make 20 cage bunshin, use them for training, and not be affected. Sakura spent the next one hour learning the cage bunshin, in which she had no problem due to her chakra control. Afterwards, she sent one cage bunshin to train with one of Naruto's cage bunshin about Irio Ninjutsu. Naruto then handed her a chakra paper and told her to channel her chakra into it. The result was half of the paper burning and one fourth crumbling to dust and the other one fourth getting wet, an. I saw this on Narutopedia, don't lash out on me saying that I have overpowered her, Naruto looked at her and said well Sakura-chan you are in luck, I also have trained in these affinities, we will master Suetan and Katen, and I think Doten will help you in your fighting style. We will start to train in these the day after tomorrow. Now, the main I called you here said Naruto as he took out a brush and two ink bottles from his Fuinjutsu kit. Naruto looked at her and said we are lacking in the physical and speed department Sakura-chan, I will place resistance seals on your limbs and a gravity seal on you, the resistance seals are like Lee's weights, but you don't have to worry about taking them off, just make a half ram hand seal, think about it, and gone are your weights, the gravity seal is a bit more complicated but will affect your body as a whole instead of just the limbs, so what do you say? Sakura looked at Naruto, smiled and said sure Naruto-kun, we have to improve to our best. Naruto nodded and said Sakura-chan, remove your sandals and your gloves, the resistance seal will go there, oh and before that Naruto opened one ink bottle and said, add your blood in there Sakura-chan, it will recognize your blood, and that is how you will be able to remove your seals, Sakura nodded and took out a kunai out of her pouch and did so, Naruto drew the seals on her legs and hands, and held his hand in a half ram seal, and said Fuin, the effect was instantaneous as Sakura found it her limbs hard to move. Naruto then said next is the gravity seal Sakura-chan, it can be applied in only three places, the chest, the back of the neck or the back, where do you want it? Asked Naruto, but Sakura saw that he was blushing furiously. Inner Sakura again woke up and said now's your chance girl, show him what this cherry baby is made of, Shanaro. Sakura herself was blushing furiously but smirked and replied oh, is my Narukun blushing? Naruto shook his head vigorously and said and no saw Sakura-chan, I just told you the truth. Naruto slowly registered what she said and thought wait, what does she mean by my Narukun, I thought she never liked me. What happened next shocked Naruto to the core, he sensed that Sakura-chan has these feelings for me, Oya Kurama, it's not some bad joke is it, no, the feelings that Vixen has for you are genuine, about time both of you Naruto decided to talk about that to Sakura at the end of the day. I would like it on my back Naruto-kun said Sakura as she turned around and removed her top, Naruto saw her pink bra and tried to concentrate on the seal, as he drew the sealing array on her back and asked Sakura to put her top back on which she did, and Naruto activated the seal, the effect was instant, as Sakura slumped to the ground and found it hard to get back up. Naruto explained, with the help of the gravity seal, you can increase the effect of gravity on your body, there are five levels, the first level which you are at, increases gravity on your body twofold, the second level, five times as much, the third level, eight times as much, the fourth level, ten times, and the last level twelve times Naruto then, mixed his blood in a new ink bottle, made a cage bunshin which applied the resistance seals on him, he then removed his jacket showing a mesh shirt which clung tightly on him, showing his well-developed abs. Sakura was blushing even more furiously as inner Sakura ran to remove that mesh and show that abs more, Shanaro. But as he removed his mesh shirt she gasped in shock, watching a scar running over the right side of his chest, she neared him and asked, what is this scar Naruto-kun? How did you get it? Naruto looked at Sakura as his hand went over his scar, he sighed and said, this is a reminder of the day when Sasuke tried to kill me and when I failed to save him from darkness. 
Sakura hugged him and cried on his shoulder and said oh, I am so sorry Naruto-kun, if I wasn't such a bitch that day, this would have never happened. Naruto returned her hug and replied, it's not your fault Sakura-chan, don't ever call yourself that, and now let us start training. Naruto applied the seal and made two cage bunshin for Senjutsu training, as both of them took their time to adjust with the weights and the gravity seal, at end of the day, both were panting. Both of them sat down, and Naruto said Sakura-chan, at the end of the week, you have to remove the gravity seals for your body to recover, by the end of the week, our speed will increase by two times, with the help of the gravity seal alone, and with the resistance seals, it will increase even more, this training regimen is for four weeks, and it will help us drastically. Sakura nodded as she removed her sandals to show sore muscles on her legs, but Naruto stopped her and said hey, Sakura-chan, mind if I do that Sakura nodded as Naruto did the hand seals, and activated the Shosenjutsu mystical palm technique, he healed Sakura's muscles as Kurama healed his own muscles. Both of them sat there as in Sakura broke the silence Naruto-kun, there is something I need to talk to you about. Naruto said don't worry Sakura-chan, I already know it. Sakura looked at Naruto in shock and asked w what do why why you know Naruto-kun. Naruto smiled and answered, you want to confront me about your feelings, don't you Sakura looked at Naruto in shock and wanted to ask him how he knew it, but before she could say anything, he answered for her due to my sensory abilities, I sensed your feelings for me, I never thought that this day would come actually Sakura-chan. Sakura looked at him smiled and said so what now Naruto-kun, what do you intend to do? He looked at her and said of course, if you would like, I want to give us a chance he sighed and said, but before that I have to tell Hinata. She smiled again and said so, it's great don't you think, Ninaruto-kun. He smiled and replied yes, Sakura-chan, but for now, let's get back home, Anbu were saying that Daimyo-sama has an announcement to make. Sakura replied hi, after the reconstruction is complete, we will go on our date. Naruto nodded as both of them left, he walked Sakura to her tent and went back to the Hokage mansion to sleep and wait for the big date tomorrow. The new Hokage stood heroically in the balcony of the Hokage Tower, his Hayori was flapping in the wind, while the large crowd of people cheered his name. Naruto looked heroic in this display as he soaked in the crowd's reaction. He relished in both the good and the bad. Despite the people's cheers he could also sense a little bit of doubt lingering in their hearts, he paid it no mind. It only served as inspiration for Naruto to prove them all wrong once more. Among the crowd, Naruto's companions, teammates and classmates looked in awe as their friend achieved his lifelong dream. On one section the Konoha 11 all gathered together. Naruto's induction as Hokage led to a variety of reactions from Naruto's friends and classmates. Naruto-kun your flames of youth burn as bright as the sun, you truly are my eternal rival loudly yelled Rock Lee, Tenten merely shook her head and walked towards her loud teammate as she hit his head with her fist, Lee, don't ruin the moment she scolded. Niji simply watched his teammate's shenanigans, he shook his head in an amused manner, but he also had a small smile on his face. He looked once more towards the balcony at their new Hokage, I may no longer believe in fate Naruto, but I do believe it was your fate to be Hokage he thought to himself, as he reminisced of his complicated past with Naruto. At the same time, Team 10 were also having their own set of unique reactions, the new generation of Ino Shikacho all celebrated the success of their longtime friend. Ino gazed towards Naruto's direction staring at him dreamily, now I could really fall for him she silently told herself. As for the Akamichi he raised a bag of chips to the sky and dedicated it to Naruto before intensely munching down on it. From the three however, Shikamaru was the one with the most affected by it, he gazed at his fellow dead last with a proud smile on his face, Naruto you troublesome bastard, you did it. The mate were also significantly affected by this announcement, from the three chunin, two were clapping as one sulked in the ground. Shino stood stoically as he clapped for his friend, if you could look closer, one could see a hint of a smile tugging at the corners of his lips. Anada on the other hand cheered shyly as her longtime crush finally achieved his lifelong dream, Naruto-kun she thought with a blush as she admired her friend stand on the tower's balcony. As for Kiba, the man was kneeling down punching the ground for losing the hookage position to his friend, a dark cloud loomed over him as his dog companion Akamaru attempted to comfort him. Hinata also tried to help her teammate while Shino merely shook his head, clearly amused at the antics of his rowdy friend. Deep down Kiba was happy for Naruto, but that doesn't mean he'd admit it to anybody. Finally there was Haruno Sakura, the lone Kanoichi of Team 7. She watched with widened eyes as she saw her new love finally achieve her dreams, then she began to clap and cheer the loudest among their group of friends. Unknowingly, tears cascaded down her cheeks, she was crying tears of joy at seeing Naruto stand in front of them all as their new leader. The idiot finally did it she thought to herself as she smiled at seeing the Rocky Dame Hokage, she admitted that she had own doubts about the affair, but she had the utmost faith in Naruto that he will find a way to succeed, he always did. She was also slightly surprised to see his attire, but she couldn't help but blush upon seeing the new Naruto. 
Another small group of Naruto's friends stood in a different area of the crowd, the small group included Kakashi, Gai, Kurinai, Shizu and Aruka. Team Abisu were also in the group, with the three genin of the team, cheering loudly for their boss, while the elder ninjas were speechless upon the sight of their new leader. The group of elder ninjas could not utter a single word, there in front of them was their Rakudame Hokage, they were all joyful and proud at the young man's achievement, but the group could not get one thing of their mind, his similarity to a certain past Hokage. Soon they were broken off their reverie as the three genin urged them to cheer as well, the older ninjas soon begun to cheer for Naruto, all except for Kakashi. The masked man merely smiled underneath his mask and looked to the sky. Minato sensei Kishina-sama, you too should be proud of your son. I am honored to call him my student he thought to himself. Back on the balcony of the tower, Naruto decided to finally address the crowd. He smiled brightly upon seeing his reception, he has certainly come a long way since his earlier days. He raised one arm slightly, and the crowd began to slowly cease their cheering to listen to their leader's words. I stand here before all of you as your hokage, this dream of mine has finally been fulfilled. I would not have been in this position without the help of all my friends over the years, they are the reason I turned out to be the man I am today, the man who stands as hokage before you all said Naruto, as his friend smiled at the young man, it was a typical Naruto display, it was his day to shine, and yet he couldn't help but still include them in the spotlight. I admit I have not had the best life in childhood growing up, it wasn't always peaches and rainbows. I was alone for most of my life, and I was ostracized due to what was inside of me, and everyone doubted if I would ever succeed as a ninja he said, as the people of Konoha looked down in guilt and shame, they were aware of their mistakes in the past. But despite all of that I hold no grudges, I have forgiven all of you a long time ago, and despite my past, I will still protect all of you as the Hokage. Do not worry about the past grievances, as Hokage I consider you all as a part of my family, and I promise to you all that I will protect all of you till my dying breath Naruto continued as the people in the crowd looked up in admiration, they clapped and cheered for him, the people of Konoha were grateful for his forgiveness and dedication. Naruto looked at the people before continuing, he smiled at the reaction of the people, and that simply reminded him of just how much he truly loved the village of Konoha. Kanoha will be in safe hands with me, the will of fire will live on through us, and for future generations, I will make sure of that. I swear on the graves of my predecessors I will protect and lead Kanoha to the best of my abilities he stated, as the crowd began to cheer louder and louder for the blonde young man. From this day forth, I will proudly serve the greatest village in the world Kanahagakur no Sado, as the Rakudame Hokage he finished. The cheers and the celebrations seemed to have no end in sight, the people of Konoha were beyond ecstatic with the news of a new Hokage Naruto was adored by the public, he was quickly rising from celebrity status into something much more. The day signified a new age in Konoha, the age of the Rakudame Hokage, Naruto Uzumaki. Somewhere in the land of fire, the trio of ninjas hailing from Kumagakur continued their journey to Konoha, the Jonin leader Samui was getting annoyed at the bickering of her two Chunin teammates Kari and Amoi. As their journey continued Kari suddenly lost it, she grabbed her hair out of frustration, damn it how long till we reach Konoha. With the pace we're going B-sensei may already have been extracted by those Akatsuki bastards. Why can't we just take the fight to them, we don't need Konoha's help, Kumo's army is more than enough she boldly declared in an angered tone. Samui sighed, she realizes that with the rate they were going their sensei killer B's life may be in peril, but she also knew that to even have a chance to rescue and find their sensei, they will need the help of the other nations. Kerry please be patient, if we were to attempt a rescue mission we at least need help from Konoha. Akatsuki include s rank ninjas, and the one who attacked B-sensei was in Achiha. we are simple overmatched at this point in time, she explained calmly as Kerry looked down in defeat, she knew Samui was right. Amoy nodded his head in agreement, Samui, how long till we reach Konoha? He asked calmly as he continued to suck on his lollipop. From my estimations it will take us up to five days at most to make it to Konoha, if we are lucky we could probably arrive sometime in the next three days, she explained as the two Chunin groaned, the two began to complain at how long their journey has been, and how much longer it will take. Samui sighed at the antics of her two teammates' display, I'm in charge of children she thought to herself, as she shook her head in disbelief. Meanwhile back in Konoha, Naruto's induction ceremony had just finished. The crowds returned to helping in their part to repair the damage left by pain during his attack. The daimyo also said goodbye to the new Hokage, as he decided it was time for him to return to his home, seeing as how his work was done. The toads also returned to their home in Mount Mayaboku, once the induction ceremony was finally over. After shaking the hands with the daimyo and the two Konoha commanders, Naruto walked down the tower to make his way to his new office, upon opening it, he saw his two new elders waiting for him patiently in front of his desk. Once the two saw him, both stood up, Hokage-sama they both said simultaneously before bowing down respectfully. Fahara-san, Hamura-san, the young man greeted. 
Okajama, as you know myself and Hamura-san are your two official advisors, we also serve as elders in Konoha, and we have served under the Sandame, the Yandame, and the Godame Hokage explained Kaharu, as Naruto nodded. As your two advisors we are aware that you are still new to the job and that you still lack the skills required for this position, no offense Hokage-sama explained the female advisor. None taken Kaharu-san, I'm more than aware of what my strengths and weaknesses are he answered back calmly. I see, well that is good. But seeing as how this is your first day on the job allow me and Hamura-san to give you the official tour, in this tour we will introduce you to the heads of certain departments in Konoha, it will be important for you to be acquainted with them, seeing as they will serve under you. We will also show you the locations accessible only to the Hokage and other high-ranking officials within Konoha. Will this be alright Hokage-sama? She asked. Naruto nodded, he then glanced over to his new desk, he saw stacks of paper, and he groaned recognizing them to be his paperwork. The paperwork required of him were all vital towards the village, and so he had to treat it with the utmost importance, but he also realized that this tour is an excellent opportunity for him to grow accustomed to his new job and to learn the ropes. He again made ten cage bunshin and sent them to work. The ten clones saluted mockingly before carrying on to do their newly assigned orders. Kaharu and Hamura watched in the background, the two looked at each other and shrugged. Both were slightly surprised to see the Hokage manage to learn the secret of the jutsu their sensei created, they did have to admit it was an efficient method. The new Hokage then decided to begin the tour, he and his two advisors quickly made their way. Soon hours fly by between the three of them, during the tour Naruto was first shown around the tower itself, he was shown the elders' offices just below his office, the council room in the top floor of the tower, and the other vital rooms within the tower. Then Naruto was shown to the underground prison of the village, the Kanoha Strict Correctional Facility, there he was introduced to the wardens, and he was told of the purpose of the area, the prison itself is the most dangerous of Kanoha, seeing as how it houses the most villainous and violent criminals, and missing nins of Kanoha. Afterwards Naruto and the two elders returned to the village itself, there he was introduced to the heads of the departments, first was Marino Ibiki, the head of Kanahagakur Torture and Intelligence T and I division, next was the Jonin commander Shikaku Nara. Naruto was already familiar with the two, but they explained their roles to Naruto for him to better understand how they could help him in the future. Next on the list was the Hokage Guard Platoon, the two elders introduced Naruto to one of his two forms of bodyguard protection squads. Unlike the four-man Anbu squad, the Hokage Guard platoon was in charge of Naruto's protection when traveling outside of Konoha. Naruto met the three members of the group, the leader was a Takubetsu Jonin Naruto recognized from his Chunin exams, Shiranyui Genma. Then there was another Takubetsu Jonin in the group, Mami Ashi Raido, and the final member was the lone Chunin from the three, Tatami Iwashi. Naruto was glad to meet them all seeing as how they will be protecting him for years to come. Once they finished with the introductions here Naruto was shown around other areas remaining in Konoha and introduced to other high-ranking officials within Konoha who now work under him. Not too long after the tour was coming close to an end, the last two places were the Konoha Archive Library and the Anbu Headquarters, they decided to go to the former rather than the latter first, the library was not an ordinary one within Konoha, this library was placed in the Hokage Monument and was only accessible to the Hokage, the Elders, the Jonin Commander and the Anbu Commander of Konoha, other than that the area was off-limits. Naruto was shown the entrance to the area and how to enter it, he needed to place his blood on a seal placed on the door for it to recognize whether or not the person had access to the area, and the seal was recently updated to also include Naruto's blood within the list. This security system worked somewhat similarly to a summoning jutsu. As the three entered the library, Naruto was told of what it held. The library had gigantic shelves full of books, documents, folders, notes and scrolls in the area, all of which were categorized in a neat and orderly manner. Naruto stood in the room in awe, he noted to himself to take advantage of his access to the area, seeing as how it could prove vital for his tenure as Hokage. Naruto walked around the library in both shock and awe, upon seeing the massive gathering of books and other files. Hamura walked over to him, amazing isn't it? He asked as Naruto nodded in agreement. Well Hokage-sama you have access to all of this. This library contains various scrolls of every jutsu of Konoha, there are also jutsu scrolls from other nations, but it mostly contains the scrolls of Konoha. Inside there are also documents, folders and notes from the former regimes, the past Hokages also held their own scrolls and journals which could be found here, and you are more than welcome to take as much as you want, just so long as you return them explained Hamura. This could prove to be extremely beneficial for me Naruto admitted, as he continued to explore the large area. He then went to the fourth's head, much to the confusion of both the advisors, but they followed him nonetheless, he looked around and found an Uzumaki spiral engraved in one of the walls, he went over there and swiped his blood over it, the rocks began to fall, and it showed two gigantic doors which opened to show the large library containing the Namikas and Uzumaki clan scrolls, the elders were shocked watching this as they never knew that this place even existed. 
Naruto saw their shocked looks and decided to enlighten them, this place is where Tu Chan and Ka Chan kept their clan scrolls in case something happened and their house was destroyed, if I am right, there should be an armory in here. They saw a door and inside were five jakudos and five katanas hanging on the wall with a scroll and a special katana kept on a wooden platform, they also saw that there were kimonos of all size hanging there made of the finest silk and there was a special red armor which was shining, an. Hashirama's armor, but there were also two large scrolls which were summoning contracts if one was to see. Naruto opened both the contracts and found that one was the Kaioi Phoenix summoning contract and the other was the Akami Wolves summoning contract, Naruto seemed confused and the elders decided to enlighten him, Hamura spoke up Hokage-sama, those are the Yuzumaki and Namaka's summoning contracts, we always thought that they were lost until now, the Yuzumaki one is the Phoenix summoning contract and the Namaka's one is the Wolves summoning contract, even though they are your birthright, I advise that you discuss it with the Toad elders before signing the contracts. Naruto replied Arigato Hemura-san, I have to discuss it with them first, but before that Naruto made 50 cage bunshin and sent them to read the scrolls in the library. He then summoned Fukasaku and Shima who seemed confused and asked Naruto Naruto-chan, why have you summoned us and where are we? Asked Fukasaku. Naruto answered Goman, Fukasaku-sama, Shima-sama, but I came across my clan summoning contracts and decided to ask two first about it, Fukasaku and Shima smiled and chuckled which confused all three of them, Fukasaku then answered no problem Naruto-chan, we already discussed it with them after you were born, they have no problem in this, but I recommend you to summon Bunta and us when you are about to summon them for the first them, Naruto nodded and sealed his shadow clone summoning scroll on a seal on his right sleeve of the Heiori, and both of them disappeared back to Mayabakizen as he formally signed the contract with his blood. He then strapped the Yuzumaki clan contract on his back. Pocketed the scroll which was with the katanas and chikudos. He then sealed the armor in another scroll, which was the same size as the clan summoning contract. He also took the katanas and sealed them in one and chikudos in another, he did the same with the kimonos, and he took the last katana and picked it up, it had a black handle with a blood red sheath with flowing water on it. He unsheathed it, it was crimson red blade which made Kaharu and Hamura gasp, Kaharu said ho 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 Kajama, that is your mother's prize blade, we also thought it to be lost. Naruto eyed the blade, sheathed it and attached it to the left side of his waist and gave the storage scrolls to his cage bunchens and left with the advisors. After a while Naruto and the two decided to go to their final location, the Anbu headquarters. The Anbu headquarters secret entrance was within the Hokage tower basement, there Naruto was shown a secret door and pathway to the base itself. This base proved to be among the many littered all around Konoha, but this also served to be the main base of Anbu, the others were also decimated during the attack of pain, leaving this to be the sole remaining base within Konoha. As Naruto entered he was shown through the area until they arrived to the base itself, the area was large seeing how it was underground. There were various facilities in the area such as changing rooms, offices, conference rooms, bathrooms, gyms, dojos, training grounds, a bar and other recreational rooms. None of those were of concern however, as they instead made their way to the Anbu commander's office instead. During their walk to the Anbu commander's office, the various Anbu within the base began to salute respectfully towards their new leader, Naruto smiled at the respect he was getting. A few minutes later they finally managed to arrive in the commander's office, once they arrived Naruto thought it seemed similar to the Hokage's office, but slightly smaller. The Anbu commander bowed and the three noticed he was accompanied by four other Anbu operatives who bowed alongside the commander, it seemed as if the man had been expecting them for some time. Okajama, it is a pleasure to see you he said. Thank you Anbu Hanchu, it seems you have been expecting us. Replied the young Hokage. Indeed Okajama, we were awaiting your arrival as I wish to introduce your new Anbu bodyguard squad to you. I assure you that upon reviewing all my personnel, I could not find anybody else more capable than them, they are the best of the best, said the masked man as he pointed to his four other members who stood in place proudly. Naruto nodded and smiled as he saw them, he noticed that there were three shinobi and one kanoichi from the group. Pleased to meet you all, but before you all become my official protection squad from Anbu, I wish to meet you all without the masks he said with a smile. The four Anbu members all looked towards their commander, as if asking for permission, he nodded, and the four began to remove their masks, Naruto looked at each of them, could you please introduce yourselves? He asked as the four nodded. The first to walk up was an average looking man, he had spiky brown hair and brown eyes, he looked like he was in his mid-thirties, Hokage-sama I am Miyamoto Katsuro, my roles in the group are as the captain and the tracker. My Anbu codename is Akami, Wolf, and I have been in Anbu for 15 years he said proudly before stepping back. Next to walk up was a blonde man with blue eyes much like Naruto who looked to be in his 30s as well, my name is Yamanaka Daichi, Hokage-sama. My role in the team is as the torture and interrogation specialist of the group, I also serve as a censor. My Anbu codename is Hayo, Panther, and I have been in Anbu for 11 years he said as he stepped back into the group. 
Naruto nodded, this is a good start he said pleasantly as the lone Kanoichi of the group walked up to begin her introduction. She appeared to have a slender and athletic figure, she had dark blue hair and green eyes, and she also appeared to be in her mid-twenties. Hello Hokage-sama, my name is Suzuki Kid. I serve as the poison specialist, the trap expert and medic of our group. My codename in Anbu is Kumo, Spider, and I have been in the organization for six years. Then the final member walked up as Kid rejoined her group. The young man had dark red hair much like Gara, but he also had yellow eyes, he appeared to be in his mid-twenties as well. My name is Sato Hideki, I am the weapon specialist, infiltration expert and the assassin of the group. In Anbu I am known as Tanuki, Badger, and I have been in this line of work for seven years he said. Naruto could hear a certain nine-tailed fox laughing his ass off in his mind, but ignored it. Naruto was pleased with the team, thank you all for agreeing to do this, I feel safe now that my life is in your hands, he told them as the four smiled. In behalf of the four of us Hokage-sama, we vow to protect your life to the best of my capabilities, said the captain of the group, Kitsuro Miyamoto. The Hokage approved of the four as he ordered them get ready to begin, the four nodded and vanished to station themselves within the Hokage tower. But this final step now done, the tour was now over and the three returned to the office at a leisured pace, Naruto did his best to remember all the places and people from earlier today. As they entered the office once more Naruto saw his clones hard at work, as they quickly and efficiently went through the Hokage's bane known as paperwork, he also noticed the letters properly sealed and placed in the side of his desk, and he smiled at the good job done by his shadow clones. The Namaka's summoning contract and the storage scrolls were also there kept in a corner, he removed his summoning scroll and kept it there. The two elders were also surprised at the rate that the clones finished the paperwork, in order to check their work, Hamura walked over to the pile of the completed paperwork and began to read a few off the top, he was quite impressed at the performance and the choices of the clones, their decisions and choices with the paperwork was a little rough around the edges, but that was to be expected, all in all though it was quite well done considering Naruto's non-existent experience to this line of work. Naruto saw the impressed expression of the elder, and he couldn't help but grin upon seeing their reactions, he then walked over to his new chair and sat in it, as he relaxed his aching feet, the two elders then made their way to the front of Naruto's desk, as they directed their attention to the young Hokage. Do you have any questions Hokage-sama? Asked Kaharu, Naruto nodded slightly. Yes I do have two questions. First off, am I able to promote anybody I see fit? My second one is related to my staff, if I was not mistaken, I am also entitled to an advisor or two, and a secretary correct? The Hokage asked the two. Amura began to answer Naruto's first question, as for the promotions unfortunately you are unable to just promote anyone you see fit. For this you have to run your choices over the council during meetings where they will vote on whether or not a candidate is worthy of a promotion, but during times of war or during an invasion attack, you are given the ability to bypass the rule, promote whoever you want, you do not need to seek approval from the council. For the second question Hokage-sama, yes you are entitled to your own personal staff. You alone are in charge of choosing them, but we do advise you to be cautious as to who you would choose as your advisors, we recommend for you to choose only two of them, and even though we will serve as you official advisors, they will be your personal advisors answered Kaharu. Any other questions Hokage-sama? She asked. Actually I have another question which popped into my mind, it's about the Jonin vote. I just want to know any details about it, when it will take place and such he told them. The Jonin vote is a customary tradition to see if one candidate is truly worthy of the position of Hokage, usually it takes a month or two during the reign of the Hokage to see if he is worthy, but due to the state of the village, we believe we may push it back to six months. During those six months you must impress the Jonin of Kanoha and show them why you are worthy of the position, during the vote you also need at least 75% of the Jonin votes to be accepted, the votes of Jonin, Anbu and Takubetsu Jonin are counted during this event explained Kaharu. Naruto understood the answers of the two elders, he already had people in mind for a promotion and for his personal advisors and secretary. He also felt no pressure with the Jonin vote, he was confident in his abilities. Sensing no other question the elders nodded, Kaharu then informed Naruto about what tomorrow would bring for him. Okajama, we have also scheduled your first ever council meeting tomorrow, the clan heads and other council members were also told about this. This is customary much like the tour in order to show the newly inducted Hokage the real council meetings since as Hokage, this is going to be a regular event in your life. The council members are anxious to hear from you, they are currently awaiting any form of news or plans you may have concerning Kanoha's reconstruction plans, and while you are there I suggest for you to ready whatever idea you have in mind which requires approval from the council. Now if you ever have any more questions you wish to ask us, just look for us within our offices below you," she explained to Naruto as both she and Hamura began to exit the office of the Hokage. But before the two could leave Naruto decided to ask them one more question that has been bugging him all day, Wadey called out to them as the two refrained their actions and moved back into the front of Naruto's desk. 
Yes Hokage-sama, what do you need of us? Asked Hamura. Actually Hamura-san, Kaharu-san I have one final question, but it is more of a personal question he admitted. Of course Hokage-sama, ask away replied Kaharu. Naruto gulped as he thought of ways not to sound rude towards the two elders, why are the two of you being so supportive of me? He asked, as the moment those words came out of his mouth, he realized his mistake as it did sound slightly rude towards the two elders. Excuse me? Kaharu asked in a confused tone. Naruto re-compassed himself, what I mean is why are you to suddenly helping me and my chances at being Hokage? I would have thought that the both of you would be supporters of Danzo rather than myself, and I recall both of you not being particularly fond of me during my childhood he explained. The two elders' expression softened, they now understood Naruto's confusion towards the whole situation. Kahara looked at Hamura, and the elder man nodded to her giving her the confirmation to finally explain their views concerning the matter at hand to Naruto. The Haru sighed, we will admit Hokage-sama, when you were growing up we weren't particularly your biggest fans. We admit that we were even on Danzo's side when the topic at hand was concerning you, we thought it would be best for you to be placed in Root rather than the academy, but the Sandame always rejected Danzo's suggestions to place you in Root. But as you continue to grow so did our opinions about you she explained. Naruto listened attentively, he flinched at the mention of his possible recruitment to Root, he was extremely grateful towards the Sandame that he had not been placed in that horrible faction. The Sandame was the first key factor in changing our views about you, Hiruzen was always a kind and nurturing man, and he thought the world of you. He always believed in you, and that belief soon rubbed on us, when we saw you risk your life during the Chunin exams, and when we saw you willingly take on pain by yourself, we saw you for who you truly were she continued, Naruto looked at the two elders in surprise, he hadn't known that he has this effect on people. Ever since the Chunin exams we saw your potential and the love you held for the village, we also saw the will of fire burning brightly within you. We could see greatness in your near future, and we even believed you could even one day become Hokage. We just didn't think it would be so soon, and although we believe in you, we aren't necessarily sold on you already becoming Hokage. You are much too young Hokage-sama, and you don't have the required knowledge, political savviness nor etiquette to truly be a cage, at least not yet. We want you to one day be Hokage, but we would have preferred it to be the later rather than sooner. We wish that by the time you were chosen as Hokage, you would have already been equipped with the required skills and knowledge, rather than having to be baptized in fire. Naruto nodded fully understanding the source of their worries and reluctance, he was not at all surprised that it revolved around his immaturity, unrefined nature, impatience and naivety. A cage needed the perfect blend of both strength and knowledge, but at this point in time, Naruto was more than aware that his strength was far more superior to his knowledge. If he were to be a successful Hokage he needed to grow up, mature and learn as much as he can, and he planned on doing just that. Although we do agree with Danzo from time to time and although we are friends with him, even we must admit that we would rather have you as Rakudame Hokage than him she confessed as Naruto was broken out of his thoughts, he stared at the elderly woman with a shocked expression. What do you mean? He asked. Danzo is too aggressive and ambitious for his own good, and though he cares for Kanoha as much as we do, his methods of showing it are questionable to say the least. Naruto nodded in understanding, but Hokage-sama it is what it is, and there is no way to turn back time. We are still more than happy that you're Hokage, but that does not mean we will always be on your side during arguments and debates. We may be supporters of you, but our main priority is Kanoha and the village's well-being, we may not always appear to be your friends Hokage-sama, but we will do everything we can to help you live up to your potential. Naruto looked at Kaharu surprised at the word she told him, he smiled at the two elders and felt happy to know that he did have people who believed in him. Arigato Kaharu-san, Hamura-san Naruto told the two. The two bowed respectfully to Naruto, Hokage-sama, we may not believe you are ready just yet for your position, but we will assist you in any way possible to hone your potential for you be a great Hokage Hamura said before the two elders began to leave Naruto's office, but before the two left Hamura remembered something important. Also, before we leave Hokage-sama, I wish to give you something to help you start off with Hamura told Naruto, as he handed him a moderate-sized storage scroll, inside the storage scroll are books on topics such as politics, history and economics. These are merely a small collection of books within our office, which could help you develop your skills as Hokage, I recommend for you to read them as soon as you can, consider this our congratulatory gift Hokage-sama. Just as they were about to leave, the door opened and Danzo came in with a stoic demeanor on his face, he closed the door and said Hokage-sama, you called me. Naruto remembered his talk to Danzo during the meeting and said yes Danzo, it's good that the advisors are also here, now, I have a question to ask you. 
What do remember about Nidame Sama Shinobi program that he wanted to enforce? The advisors looked confused, but Danzo knew what he was talking about and answered, he wanted to enforce a training program similar to my route, but instead of removing emotions, he wanted Shinobi to control their emotions, both the advisors looked a little shocked, and Naruto said now, Danzo, I was going looking in these drawers and found out a specific piece of paperwork that Sandane Jiji left before his death, it was concerning you Root everyone's eyes widened when he mentioned Root, because its existence was an air rank secret. Now Danzo, before I continue any further, I want to tell you that because of being the Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi, I have the same ability as Mito-sama, I am a living lie detector, so I want you to tell me only the truth from now on Danzo was sweating bullets, this boy could potentially expose the secret of his route and have him executed. So Danzo I will ask you questions and reply to me in only yes or no, said Naruto, who had a small smirk on his face which infuriated Danzo even further. Do you love Konoha? Hi. If the root existed, then can I take control of it any time I wanted? Hi. Did the Sandame ask you to disband root? Hi. Did you coax Hanzo to work against a peaceful group? Hi. Did you have one of its leader killed? Hi. Did you know that he is a student of Jiraiya? No. Do you admit your crimes? Hi. Do you want to repay for your crimes and be useful for Konoha? Hi. Is root still running? Hi. Then as of this moment you are the commander of reinstated root division of Anbu, whose supreme control is under me. Anzo had eyes as wide as saucers on this statement and mouth open. But before he can say anything Naruto continued, but you will follow Nidame Sama's program in your route, I want battle-hardened shinobi who can lead and make their own decisions, not emotionless puppets who can't think on their own. So what do you say? He glanced over his teammates, but they were amused by this, Kaharu spoke up yes Danzo, the boy discussed it with us before he started his tour, he found a good solution, and asked us for an advice, and we approved because we found the solution to be great. Naruto continued where she left Root will be a division and a training unit, people can apply to be a part of Root or to be trained as a Root, but the training part will not include any emotional training, the people who would be able to apply for Root will be any rank above Takubetsu Jonin. Amura picked up from here after we make a new academy system, anyone above Chunin rank from the new batch will be able to apply, the new academy system will be designed by the Shinobi Council, so what do you say about this offer? Anzo was shocked when he heard this, only three days being the Hokage and he taking such drastic measures, he finally voiced his thoughts, why are you doing this? Why, for the best of Konoha of course, if Shinobi can control their emotions and think for themselves, then someone like Nagato can be saved and could be an asset to the village instead of dying, replied Naruto. Danzo found his respect for Naruto growing and decided to ask him one final question permission to ask one final question, Hokage-sama. Naruto sighed as he knew Danzo's question and replied I know what you want to know Danzo, yes, I will admit that Sasuke is like a brother to me and has lost himself to darkness, but I will give him one final chance before doing what is best for Konoha, kill him, and that would be the end of the once great Ichiha clan, and they will be engraved in history forever. Danzo seemed surprised and doubted by this, but the look in Naruto's eyes removed his every doubt as he smiled, stood up, bowed and said of course, Hokage-sama, I accept, by the end of the week, I will have each root shinobi on the official records of Konoha. Konoha, and you have supreme command over them. Naruto nodded and said Kaharu-san, Hamura-san, can you please leave, there are some private matters I want to discuss with Danzo-san here, both of them nodded and left, Naruto made a hand sign, and the Anbu also left, he then put up silencing and privacy seals on the whole office, and said Danzo, I have a mission that only you can accomplish, and it's regarding the Akatsuki, there is very high chance that you will be killed, but if the mission is successful, we will have Akatsuki on our fingertips, Danzo, surprised by the seriousness in his voice nodded and asked, what is this mission Hokage-sama? Naruto said in this mission, you have to, Konoha, the morning sun rose over Konoha once again, and it indicated the Hokage's second day on the job. As Naruto woke up in his quarters and he realized the importance of the day, today was his first council meeting as the Hokage of Konoha. After preparing for his meeting and gathering his notes to discuss at the meeting, he summoned a few cage bunshin for them to study the files and books he gathered from the library and the books given to him by the two elders. Naruto then remembered his duties for the day, he sweated nervously upon realizing that today he was going to be having his first council meeting, he had been preoccupied by his love life. He headed upstairs and made his way to his office first. Once there he summoned clones once more to continue with a new stack of paperwork for today, then Naruto headed up to the final floor of the tower to enter the large conference room which housed the Konoha council meetings. Upon entering all the eyes were suddenly on him, there seated in the large conference table, seemed to be clan heads, on each of the seats of the clan heads was a flag attached to its back with the logo of the clan they represented. He also noticed that four of those seats were unoccupied. Also sitting on the table were six representatives out of seven of the civilian council, they were seated near the end of the table, while at the head of the conference table was the seat for the Hokage. 
seated nearest to the Hokage's seats were the elders of Konoha, all noticed his arrival and quickly stood up to bow respectfully including Danzo which surprised everyone except the elders and himself. Naruto bowed back and made his way to his seat as the rest of the council members sat on their respective seat. Welcome Hokage-sama to your first council meeting. I believe it is time for us to begin Humura said respectfully as Naruto nodded his head. I agree Humura san replied the blonde Hokage. Very well then, I believe it would be best for each of you to introduce ourselves first and begin our roll call Humura continued. Then one by one the members of the council individually stood up to introduce them, the first were the three elders, then were the six civilian council members. Each of which seemed to be in the age of 40 and over, from the six representatives four of which were men and two were women, most of them were successful businessmen and businesswomen in Kanoha. Then finally there were the clan heads of Kanoha, each of which began to introduce themselves and the clan they represented, they went by it in alphabetical order, the same way they were organized in the table. The first to introduce themselves was Aburam Shaibi, greetings Hokage-sama, my name is Aburam Shaibi, and I am here to represent the Aburam clan he told him as he bowed respectfully. Naruto recognized the man as Shino's father and smiled, only now did he realize how many of his friend's parents represented their own clans as the head. Then Naruto noticed the reserved man walk over to Naruto as he handed him a tanto, Naruto looked confused for a second but bowed graciously as he thanked the older man. As Shibi made his way back to his seat Kahara leaned over to Naruto's ear, the clan heads each brought you gifts Hokage-sama, this is a customary tradition for each new Hokage, and this is done to gain favor and show their respect to you. Each gift represents their clan she whispered. Naruto nodded and smiled at the gift, he wondered what each clan head had in store for him. Next to stand up was Choji's father, Hokage-sama, I am Akamichi Choza, I represent the Akamichi clan he proudly declared, before standing up to hand Naruto an Akamichi Majinata, this was the main weapon of his clan, once again Naruto thanked the man for the wonderful gift. Then the third to stand up was the stoic Hayuga Hiyashi, he bowed at the presence of the young man and smiled, he reminds me of his father he thought to himself before he began his introduction. I am Hayuga Hiyashi, and I am here to represent the Hayuga clan as its leader he said as he made his way to hand Naruto yukata made from the finest silks, its design was both simple and delicate, it was a black yukata with a dark red sash. Naruto accepted the gift happily. Diba's mother then stood up with a feral grin as she stared down Naruto intimidatingly, Naruto gulped and began to sweat nervously, due to the intense glare of the woman, Hokage-sama, I am Inuzuka Tsum. I've heard so much about you from my Sachi Kiba, anyway I am here to represent the Inuzuka clan she said as she handed Naruto an Inuzuka fang necklace. The fifth member to stand up was a man Naruto recognized quite well, the clan head of the Nara clan and Shikamaru's father Shikaku Nara. He stood up calmly and sighed, introductions are so troublesome he confessed as the whole council sweat dropped at the Nara's laziness. Like father like son Naruto thought to himself in an amused tone before Shikaku began to speak. We already know each other Hokage-sama, but I am Nara Shikaku, and I am here as Jonin commander, and as the clan head of the Nara clan he said, his gift to Naruto however was unlike the others, this time it was a shogi board which Naruto gladly accepted. Then a man the Hokage didn't recognize began to stand, upon first glance Naruto almost mistook him for the deceased Jonin Sirotobi Asuma. He appeared to have the same spiky hairstyle and the same beard as Asuma, but physically he was slightly shorter and smaller than the man. Hello there Hokage-sama, we have not met, but I am certain you've met my father, son and my older brother, in fact I've heard a lot of things about you from the three of them, all good things I assure you he said before chuckling. My name is Saratobi Daisuke, Hokage-sama. I am the son of the Sandame Hokage Saratobi Hiruzen, and the younger brother of Saratobi Asuma, and I am here to represent the Saratobi clan he said, as Naruto's eyes widened, he now recognized why the man seemed slightly familiar. Upon hearing the news about him being familiar with his son, Naruto guessed that this man might be the father of Konohamaru. Naruto smiled as he met the man and the new head of the Saratobi clan, if he was anything like his father, brother or son, then he and Naruto will likely have a good relationship. Aesuke also walked towards Naruto as he handed him his gift, as the two men met for the first time they also shook hands. On behalf of the Saratobi clan, Naruto was handed a traditional clan bow staff designed much like the Sandame's adamantine staff with the Monkey King Anma. As Daisuke made his way back to his seat, the final member of the clan head stood up, Naruto recognized the man as Ino's father, greeting Hokage-sama, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Yamanaka Inoichi, and I am here to represent the Yamanaka clan he said as he walked towards Naruto and handed him a katana as a gift, the katana was the weapon which represented their clan the best. Naruto then stood up and bowed towards the whole table, thank you everybody for your gifts. As Hokage I will make sure to treasure each of them and consider them as an act of friendship from each of the clans he said, before the members of the council began to applaud the young man. If it's alright with all of you I believe the meeting should now commence continued Naruto as the whole council room nodded. Okage-sama, I suggest we begin with your plans concerning Kanoha's reconstruction. 
currently this is the village's main issue, and we would like to hear your input on the matter and how you plan to fix this current problem advised Hamura. Naruto nodded as he began to address the situation at hand, during the past few days I have been thinking of methods in which we could restore Konoha to its former glory. I first plan on recalling back our ninjas away on lower level missions, recon missions and border patrol duties, we will need their efforts and as much help as we could get in order to rebuild our village Naruto continued. Is that all Hokage-sama? Asked one of the civilian council member not yet completely convinced by Naruto's plans of reconstruction. Naruto shook his head, of course not, this is just the beginning. As you all know Yamato Taichu along with me have the rare ability of Mokuten he said, the council members were shocked and Naruto explained, after which they nodded their heads. Well with this unique ability I plan on assigning Yamato as the leader of the reconstruction project of Konoha, our Mokuten abilities are invaluable in this situation. My plan involves him leading the reconstruction and myself as the overseer of the project, he told the council confidently, as the council began to see the logic in Naruto's choices and decisions. Shikaku adopted a thinking pose as he strategized other methods to further increase the potential rate of reconstruction for Konoha Hokage-sama, how about we also ask for help from our allies from Suna to speed up our restoration he suggested. Naruto smiled at Shikaku's thought, he was thinking along the same lines, and then some, I'm glad you brought that up Shikaku-san, I was thinking of the same thing. But Gara is not my only option, during my days as a gen and I took part in various high-ranking missions, and from them I managed to meet a wide variety of people, many of which could help us with the reconstruction he replied. Naruto then went on to list the people he had in mind, all of which shared a friendly connection and bond with the Hokage, and Naruto was confident that they were willing to help him in his time of need. He told the council of his plans to ask for help from the likes of Tazuna, Shibuki, Gara, Toki, Chikara, Koyuki and Haruna, and he also told them about a potential treaty with AIM. The council as a whole were surprised to hear this, but when told them what he discussed with Conan, all of them agreed. He would now soon write letters to each of the people he previously listed, and he plans on sending a genin team for each letter. Aside from that he also planned on sending out a few more genin teams to also gather and purchase resources from other lands. Once the talks of reconstruction ended the council members were quite impressed with their young Hokage, he compassed himself as a true Hokage should, and he offered logical and impressive plans to fix the current situations of Konoha. But despite all of that what surprised the council most were Naruto's connections, the young man already had the support of various leaders, major political figures and even daimyos. All of this could prove usual for the future, Naruto's two advisors Kaharu and Hamura also noted this down, these connections of Naruto has the potential to be beneficial in the long run. When Danzo was also supporting the young Hokage, everyone was surprised, but Shikaku deduced that something must have happened yesterday to cause this. After their discussion on Konoha's reconstruction, Naruto then brought up his own ideas concerning promotions, and the council members all listened attentively and as unbiasedly as they could for each of Naruto's six recommendations for promotions. The first of the promotions was for a Chunin promotion, he told them that he wished for Suratobi Konohamaru to be promoted for his heroics and actions during the invasion of pain, wherein he managed to defeat one of the six paths of pain in order to save his sensei Abisu, and he managed to do so by performing the Rasengan. Naruto couldn't help but smile as he recommended his unofficial student for the promotion, he was proud of his Atoto and his student for his growth as both a ninja and as a man. Ultimately the council decided unanimously that Konohimaru did deserve the promotion, in the back day suit grinned at his son's promotion. The next one Naruto had in mind was a promotion for the longtime Chunin and member of the Hokage Guard platoon, Tatami Iwashi. He wished for him to promote it from Chunin to Takubetsu Jonin, due to his long tenure as both a Chunin and member of the Hokage Guard platoon, he has also shown himself to wield the skills of the Takubetsu Jonin. Unlike the previous recommendation this decision took much longer, but in the end they decided he too was worthy of a promotion. Then there were Naruto's four final promotions, all of which were to the rank of Jonin. Three of which were for Marino Ibiki, Shiranyui Gemma and Midarashi Anko. The first two choices had not been all that much conflicted, unlike the final choice. The council saw it fit for both Genma and Ibiki to be promoted for their long-standing loyalty to Konoha and for all their actions and achievements during their tenure as ninjas of Konoha. However Anko was a much more controversial choice than any of them, most of the council was still unsure of her loyalty due to her previous association with the snake San and Rajimaru. But after some input and convincing by the Hokage, the council voted for her, and so the snake mistress was chosen for a promotion, the council members against her promotion decided to trust in their Hokage's judgment. The final promotion Naruto had in mind consisted of his good friend, Naruto suggested for Nara Shikamaru to be promoted from a Chunin into a Jonin, the council members were all surprised, but none more so than Shikaku Nara. 
After a lengthy discussion concerning this possible promotion the council was swayed by Shikamaru's tactical, strategic and leadership abilities, but was disappointed by his lazy and unmotivated nature. However ever since the death of Asuma, nobody could say that Shikamaru was the same person, that unfortunate event proved to be an eye-opener for the young man. In the end though it was Shikamaru's victory over Haydn which sealed the deal, the council members all decided that he truly was worthy of promotion. Naruto smiled at the council, all six of his recommendations panned out to be promoted. Now after their discussion on promotions they began to talk about the budgeting of Kanoha's many departments. The debate concerning this topic lasted a couple of hours, Naruto made it clear that he wished to dedicate most of their funds from the daimyo, trades and savings on the reconstruction of Kanoha, nobody could disagree with that choice, it was logical for him to choose that at this point. But it would be the following priorities that would spark up debate between the council, Naruto wished to prioritize both education and healthcare after the reconstruction effort, some were agreeing with Naruto, while the others were deciding to give that towards the military, seeing as how their military was already the strongest among the five nations, he believed that healthcare and education were simply more important at the moment. The argument for Kanoha's funds soon ended with more than half of the council agreeing with Naruto, after further convincing by the Hokage himself. After the council's lengthy discussion with the council the meeting was finally called to an end, Naruto's first meeting was officially over, and it took up to four hours of their time. Despite the amount of time spent, Naruto was still pleased with himself, as he managed to accomplish the goals and plans he had set out to do beforehand. Before they left, they were told about Danzo's newly reinstated route and the changes in it, Naruto also joked about pranking Rude as he had done with nearly each clan in the Anbu, the shinobi council members quickly understood that why Danzo was so supportive of the Hokage, Naruto also told Inoichi to discuss about some issues with the Yamanaka clan elders later in the night, which he understood and nodded and left. As the members of the council began to walk towards the exit, each congratulated Naruto once more on his new position and for his accomplishments, after a while the last remaining people in the office were the two advisors and Danzo, all three of them approached the blonde Hokage. Tell me Hokage-sama, how did you find your first council meeting Hemura asked the Hokage. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, it was certainly much longer than I thought, but I believe I managed to achieve the things I set out to do he answered with a smile. Amura nodded, well I must say Hokage-sama you did quite well considering this was your first, but I thank you Hamura-san, I do have a question though concerning the council. Why are there four vacant clan head seats and one vacant civilian council seat? Allow me to explain Hokage-sama intervened Kaharu, those four seats are for the clan heads of the Kurama clan, Senju clan, Ichiha clan and the Uzumaki clan. As you know those four clans are quite frankly lacking members, Tsunade Haim was among the last known Senju within Konoha, you are among the last known Yuzumaki clan members within Konoha, and finally your former teammate Sasuke is the last known Ichiha. As for the Kurama clan, their heir is still unable to fulfill her duties, seeing as how she is still trying to master her abilities, and the civilian council seat is that of the Namika's clan. She explained. Naruto nodded at the logical argument, he did in fact remember the pale girl known as Kurama Yakumo. He only hoped she was doing well wherever she was. One thing did bother Naruto though, why wasn't he the representative of the Uzumaki clan because him being an amicus was hidden. The Haru-san, as you previously stated I am an Uzumaki, why was I unable to represent my clan and could I also represent my clan now as Hokage? He asked curiously. You were unable to represent your clan in the past due to your age, a council member should at least be 18 years old, this could only be bypassed if the Hokage allows you to be a clan head, even if you are under that certain age, and it seemed that both the Sandame and Godame did not use this loophole she answered. Naruto nodded, he understood why he probably wasn't chosen. For the Sandame it was probably because he was too young and he was just beginning to grow up, while for the Godame it was probably because he wasn't ready for the responsibility just yet. He didn't mind not being chosen to represent his clan, there were no hard feelings, he was just curious to know why he hasn't represented them. Unfortunately Hokage-sama, you are also now unable to represent your clan seeing as how you are Hokage. As Hokage you should act as the unbiased judge and leader of the group, and also we cannot give you a second vote during meetings, you already have one as Hokage, and you also have the final say in things, we cannot give you another vote as clan head, seeing as that may be unfair. However your clan could be represented by any relative you may have, any heir you may soon have, and if you are married, then your wife could also represent your clan, even though if she may not be in Yuzumaki or Namikas to begin with, just as long as she takes your last name, then she is capable to represent your clan, while you act as the Hokage she explained. Alright, I understand replied Naruto before the two left the council room, the two elders made their way to their offices, leaving Naruto alone with Danzo who took a seat, and Naruto asked him any progress so far. 
Naruto said in this mission you have to, but before he could continue, there was a knock on his door, knowing who were there, he gave them the permission to enter, Kakashi and Sai entered confused to see Naruto alone with Danzo, both of them then sat down, as Naruto continued I have called because I need Sai and Danzo for a mission, and something else for Kakashi. He looked at Danzo and Sai and said I want Danzo to contact the leader of the Akatsuki, Ichiha Madara. All eyes widened upon hearing this as Naruto explained, when I was in the eight-tailed state, I met Tu Chan, he told me that someone was controlling the Kyuubi 16 years ago, and not even he was able to defeat him, we know that only one person is capable of being this strong and controlling the Kyuubi, while fighting someone as strong as the Yandame Hokage. All of them agreed with his explanation as he continued Danzo, contact Madara and put up the act of you wanting to overthrow me, I want you to know all of his plans and what he intends to do, Sai every time he meets him, I want you to follow Danzo with one of your ink beasts, this way, even if Madara does something to Danzo, we will know what his plans are. Danzo knew how much dangerous this mission was, but if he got the information, then Akatsuki would really be on Kanoha's fingertips, he nodded and accepted the mission, along with Sai. He then turned to Sai and said I have a proposition for you Sai, actually you could say it's more of a mission that you could choose to accept or refuse. Sai raised a single eyebrow as he studied Naruto, what will be the objections of this mission? He asked in response. The mission is based around espionage, I'm not going to beat around the bush Sai. I am offering you to be Kanoha's new spymaster, ever since the death of my sensei, Kanoha has lacked a spymaster. At this moment I have the notes and knowledge about my sensei's spy network, but I do not have the time to manage it. This is where you come in, I am more than aware about your talent in espionage, and so I thought you would be a logical choice for this position. So I was shocked as were Danzo and Kakashi by this proposal, are you sure about this Naruto? I hate to remind you this, but I did spy on you for Danzo-sama he replied. Naruto nodded his head, I'm still impressed about that. I trust you with this task Sai, despite your work for Danzo I know for a fact that you had no choice in the matter he declared. Sai pondered about the pros and cons about being the spymaster of Kanoha, he was still unsure if he should accept the position or not. But he was confident in his ability to thrive in the role. Why me? Why not Kakashi or Yamato? Asked Sai. Honestly I considered those two, but Kakashi will be too busy as the second in command of the Hokage. Yamato on the other hand, he'll be busy with Kanoha's reconstruction. But you were by no means my third choice, all three of you have great potential for this position, but in the end I do think that you are the right choice for this. So what do you say? He asked while offering his hand to Sai. The former rude operative stared at the Hokage's hand, after much internal debate he knew that this was something had to do. In a way this was his way of repenting for his earlier betrayal, Naruto may have forgiven him, but he has yet to forgive himself. He shook the Hokage's hands as he stared straight into Naruto's eyes, I accept he exclaimed in a serious and steely tone. Naruto grinned happily, he knew that he found the right man for the job. He could see the fire and determination in Sai's eyes, despite his usual calm and emotionless demeanor, Naruto could see just how much this appointment meant to him. That's good to hear Sai. As the Rakudame Hokage of Konoha, I am proud to appoint you as the new spymaster of Konoha. Sai nodded his head, so when do I start? Straight to the point I see replied Naruto, tomorrow head over to my office, and I'll give you the details and notes of my master. I'll also contact our spies and inform them about this. That would be wise Hokage-sama said Danzo. Also Sai, let's keep your identity and role as the spymaster a secret for now, we wouldn't want the Akatsuki to target you. Aside from myself I am allowing only a handful of other people to be informed about your new role. Kakashi, Shikamaru, Tsunade, Yamato and Danzo will be among those aware. Other than those five and me, nobody else will be allowed to learn about this. Are we clear? Hi Hokage-sama, you can count on me said Sai with determination in his eyes. Good, you can leave now said Naruto as Sai left the room, he then turned to Danzo and said Danzo, I know that this mission is dangerous, and with the current asset you have in your eye, it would be dangerous for Konoha if someone managed to get that eye. Danzo's eye widened upon hearing that, but he remembered Naruto's sensory abilities, he nodded and went to answer, but he Hokage beat him to it, I know an Irio ninjutsu which will transfer both of your eyes, and using the Kaiubi's chakra, I can make Sensei's eyes turn on and off. Each eye widened upon hearing this, he decided to demonstrate it, he put his hand beside Kakashi's left eye and channeled Kaiubi's chakra into him, Kakashi felt some changes in his body and chakra network a little, after Naruto was done, Kakashi stopped channeling chakra to his eye and removed his headband, and everything was normal, which meant that Naruto was telling the truth. He again channeled chakra into his eye, and now he was watching the world from the Sharingan's perspective. 
Naruto turned to Danzo, told him the hand signs and told him to do the jutsu. The jutsu was developed by Tsunade in case that anyone did not have time on a battlefield, needed a transplant from a nearly dead or dying person. Danzo completed the hand signs, concentrated on Kakashi's eye, and said Kinku Tenso no jutsu, emergency transfer technique. White light from Danzo right eye connected with Kakashi's right eye as the eyes exchanged themselves. Naruto did the same with Kakashi's right eye, and now Kakashi was able to see from both eyes normally after nearly 18 years, he activated the Sharingan and the Manjekyo, instead of both eyes from different, both had the same pattern as of Ibido. Naruto even made a seal on Kakashi's head and stored five tails worth of Kyuubi's chakra to heal Kakashi's eye and body. After he would use the Sharingan automatically, Kakashi thanked Naruto and left as Naruto turned to Danzo and told him to burn his arm as the highest quality of replacement will be arranged for him. Danzo nodded and bowed and left the office, leaving Naruto to train again. Danzo replied yes, Hokage-sama, I was able to come in contact with one of his spies, he seems to be formed from Hashirama cells, from our knowledge, he was Zetsu, I have relayed the message to him, in about 3-4 to four days, maybe he will inform him and come to visit me. Naruto replied good, keep progress and keep me updated and go to the temporary hospital today, a metal arm with fully functional artificial chakra pathways, is waiting for you. Danzo bowed and left so did Naruto as he went back to his office to write letters and to send them to the different leaders. Unknown area, Deem Taka were quickly running through the trees to make it to Sasuke's former home, Kanoha. During the journey the team was relatively silent, well at least more silent than usual. Sasuke led the group, but he was engrossed with his past memories with Itachi, that has been occupying his mind lately, since he learned the truth of the massacre from the Akatsuki leader Ichiha Madara. He clenched his fist in anger at the thought of the village's crimes towards the Ichiha, he vowed to be the one to avenge his clan. Their silent journey continued until they noticed a portal-like distortion in front of them, the four stopped to see what it was, suddenly they noticed a masked man walk out of the tunnel. Team Taka recognized the man as Ichiha Madara, the masked man suddenly noticed the company, he raised a hand and greeted the four. Hey Sasuke he said nonchalantly, Sasuke didn't seem surprised at the arrival of his distant relative, while his three other teammates were in shock. What the hell, how did this guy do that? I didn't even sense his chakra, it was as if his chakra just came out of nowhere Karen frantically thought to herself. Sajetsu cursed at the arrival of the leader of Akatsuki, shit, bad timing he mumbled to himself. Sasuke was the only one unfazed from the four, he looked at Madara with an uninterested expression. How did you find us? He asked him. Madara scoffed at the foolish question of the young Ichiha, don't underestimate my power Sasuke, this is just the tip of the iceberg he replied. Sasuke nodded stoically, what do you want with me and my team? Team Taka is no longer a part of the Akatsuki, we have no use of you and your group anymore. Madara shook his head at Sasuke's foolishness, TSK, TSK, TSK Sasuke. Did you forget our deal? He asked rhetorically. I told you that I will kill you and your team if you betray me, and it seems that you did just that he said calmly. Sasuke looked at the man confused, what the hell are you even talking about? He demanded. I'm talking about the Eight Tails Jinchuriki, you failed me Sasuke, what are you talking about? We captured him and even delivered him to you intervened Karen. Madara slowly turned his head towards the red-headed Kanoichi, it was a fake my dear, he tricked all three of you he informed them as she gasped, in the back Jugo remained calm, but Sajetsu gritted his teeth. The Hichibi Jinchuriki really pulled the fast one on the four of you, I'm quite disappointed I must say, here I thought you four had potential as a team he admitted as Sasu clenched his fist in anger, he hated to fail, and he hated to be looked down upon. He recalled the battle itself, and soon his eyes widened as he realized that Madara did speak the truth, during the battle he truly did give them the slip. Sajetsu broke the awkward silence as he marched towards the masked man, what do you want us to do about it? We already did our job. He yelled angrily, but the volume had no effect on Madara, seeing as how he remained and stood as calm as before. No, you will fulfill your promise to me and my group. But I am no longer interested in the Hachibi Jinchuriki, instead I have another target I have in mind for you four. Sasuke faced the older Ichiha, and what if I said no? He asked daringly. Then you will have to face me if you wish to make it to Kanoha, and I'm sure all four of you know that even with your combined powers, you four are still too weak to even challenge me, he answered, while flaring his chakra slightly causing Karen and Sajetsu to gulp nervously due to the power of his chakra. Sasuke paid his threats no mind, he readied his Shidori and jumped towards the masked man, only for him to pass through the older Ichiha, his eyes widened at the power of Madara. As Sasuke passed through him, he whispered something to Sasuke, it's too late to go to Kanoha now. Sasuke jumped back to his team after recovering, his eyes were widened due to the statement and Madara's power, the rest of the team also looked in shock at the power of Madara. There is no point in your goal anymore Sasuke, it's futile. Too bad for you, what do you mean? Sasuke asked as he glared at the masked man. 
Konoha has been destroyed Sasuke. The whole of Team Taka were further shocked with the revelation, Karen was the first to recover. What are you talking about? She asked him. Ladara was about to speak until he noticed another chakra source, out from the ground Zetsu popped up. The members of Taka were unsurprised to see the Akatsuki spy pop up out of nowhere, during their time in the group they have learned of the plant-like man's powers. Allow me to explain Madara-sama asked Zetsu as Madara nodded, but not before asking him a question, so Zetsu, I assume you did as you were told. Who was named Hokage? I assume was Danzo. Zetsu faced his master, during my spying mission in Konoha, I found out that there were three candidates for the position of Hokage, one was Shimura Danzo, the second was Yuzumaki Naruto, and the third was Hata Kakashi, explained the Akatsuki spy, as Sasuke looked surprised at the inclusion of his former teammate. Unknown to the group however, Madara flinched slightly upon hearing the name of the third candidate, he unknowingly tightened his jaw upon hearing that name possibly become the Hokage of Konoha. Madara quickly compassed himself in order to avoid arousing suspicion, he turned to Zetsu once more, tell me who was chosen he demanded impatiently, but Zetsu remained unaffected by the man's sudden loss of composure. In the end it was the Kaiubi Jinchiriki Uzumaki Naruto he told him, as the members of Team Taka had shocked expressions, but the most shocked would be Sasuke. The young Ichiha's eyes widened in shock, and his mouth was slightly agape. Madara on the other hand was slightly surprised by this, he had expected Danzo, but with this piece of information, it seems his plans have changed once more. Madara suddenly began to laugh mirthlessly, he could see the irony of it all upon hearing the news. Is this true Zetsu, are you certain? He asked him. Zetsu nodded, it is true, his power has certainly reached the levels of a cage he assured. Madara sighed, this meant that once again a wrench was thrown into his plans, and lo and behold the cause was Naruto once more. This spelled bad news for the Akatsuki, since Naruto's protection is now heavily increased as Hokage, and also it is rare for a cage to leave their village, seeing as how they manage the village within the confides of their own personal office. Capturing Naruto was now much more difficult, seeing as how he gained the strength to defeat an enemy the caliber of pain, and how if Akatsuki wanted to get to Naruto they now had to go through all of Konoha, it didn't help that pain also revived the ninjas he killed in his attack of Konoha. As Madara thought about his next course of action one thing was for certain, Naruto was now their priority at this point in time. Sasu clenched his fist and gritted his teeth upon hearing the news, there is no way that the dope is Hokage he thought to himself. Sasuke was filled with inner turmoil at the moment, he couldn't believe that Naruto had the power of a cage already, they had just seen each other a few months back just after Naruto, Sakura, Sai and Yamato's battle with Kabuto and Orochimaru at the Tenchi Bridge. During their battle Naruto was no match for him whatsoever, even with the help of the other three, he could have easily defeated them, but now it seems that was not the case. The young Ichiha hated to be outshined and hated to be weaker than anybody, but the one thing he hated most was the thought that Naruto could have been better than him. Ever since he knew him he had been better than the dead last in everything, and even though he once considered him to be a brother, he would not allow him to exceed him in any way. He quickly shook his head for those thoughts to disappear for now, before he deals with Naruto he needed to know about what had happened to Konoha, he looked towards the two Akatsuki members, I don't care if Naruto is Hokage or not, tell me about Konoha he demanded as he attempted to hide his true feelings and thoughts about the information. Madara glanced towards the younger Ichiha, Pain, I ordered one of the Akatsuki members to attack Konoha, and it seems both he and you have made quite a commotion in the Five Nations. After your attack on the Hachibi and Pain's attack on the Kaiubi the Five Nations have been in distress, no longer were Konoha and Suna, the only villages seeing us as legitimate threats, at least two more have begun actions to counter our moves, he explained to the four-man team, before Zetsu interrupted him. Allow me to explain Madara-sama he asked as Madara nodded. Zetsu then went on to explain the Battle of Pain and Naruto, the four were surprised at the level of destruction the two caused around the Land of Fire, along with Naruto's growth as a ninja. They were all further shocked to hear that Pain wielded the legendary Rinnegan, they couldn't believe Naruto could defeat a man of that caliber. But the news told to them the three recruited members of Team Taka were unsure of what to believe from Sasuke, they were constantly told stories of Team 7 and how weak Naruto was when compared to him, and now here they were hearing about the accomplishments of Naruto. After a while Zetsu managed to complete his explanation, leaving the four dumbfounded. Zetsu looked at the Akatsuki spy, he was still slightly unsure about all of this, are you sure that Naruto actually did all of that? He asked him causing Zetsu to nod. He shuddered at the thought of someone wielding that much power and potential. I assure you all that I speak the truth. Naruto's powers increased immensely ever since he learned Senjutsu. He is even stronger than Sasuke-kun said Zetsu teasingly. Sasuke glared at the plant-like man and unleashed a little bit of Kai, I don't care about all of that, tell me about this summit you spoke of he demanded angrily, as his emotions showed his true thoughts on the matter at hand. 
Ladara sensed Sasuke's uncontrollable emotions when it came to matters such as this, he grinned as he saw Sasuke in the state. His superiority complex when it came to Naruto made him an easy target to manipulate. This could prove to be an excellent opportunity for Akatsuki he thought to himself. Tsujetsu then walked over to Sasuke and broke the tense silence, what are you thinking Sasuke? Why are we even talking about the summit meeting, isn't our mission to kill Danzo and the elders of Konoha? He asked. Sasuke looked at his sword-wielding teammate with a stoic demeanor, do not worry Sujetsu, I still plan on killing Danzo and the elders, but before then I have something I have to prove. I have a target before we get to the elders, I wish to kill my brother, he told them with a maniacal grin, as the three looked at him confused. Sujetsu looked confused, what do you mean your brother? We already killed Itachi. He asked him as Sasuke glared at him for bringing up old wounds. Sujetsu stood back a bit once Sasuke began to unveil his new Manjekyo Sharingan at him. You wouldn't understand Sujetsu, none of you would understand. This is just something I must do, something inside of me will not allow Naruto to continue what he is doing, he told them finally losing his cool. In the back Madara's grin further increased, but the expression was hidden underneath his mask. I think I could offer you a solution to your problem, Sasuke interjected the masked man as the four members of Taka directed their attention to him. Akatsuki and I already have a plan and set to attack the Five Cage Summit, we were originally going to attack to send a message to the Five Cages and to deal as much damage to them as possible, but since the Kaiubi Jinchiriki is now the Hokage, this could also serve as our best chance to capture him. So tell me Sasuke, are you by any chance interested in joining he asked coyly with a grin hidden underneath his mask. Pound me and my team in, but only with one condition. I'll be the one who will fight Naruto he told Madara, and the older man's grin widened as he nodded to confirm Sasuke's condition. Good, my plan is all coming together he thought to himself. Where is this summit going to take place and when? Sasuke asked the man, it will take place in the land of iron approximately one month from now. Sasuke nodded, Madara then looked at his spy Zetsu. Zetsu we have a change of plans, I need you to look for Kisum and bring him back, we need him for the attack on the summit, if we wish to capture the Hokage he said as Zetsu nodded. The Akatsuki spy then submerged into the ground to look for his fellow Akatsuki member Kisum, at the same time Madara and the four members of Team Taka were quickly making their way to the Akatsuki hideout to begin their planning for the summit attack. During the journey to the hideout Madara smiled underneath his mask due to his new recruits, it looks like all my plans are coming to fruition he thought to himself. Once he was finished with his initial task he called out to his Anbu, the four arrived in front of him awaiting orders. Anbu, I require you to bring me Shizune first, then Nara Shikamaru, Marino Ibiki, Midarashi Anko, Shiranyui Genma, Tatami Iwashi and Saratobi Konohamaru as a group second, after them I need you to also bring in Yamato Taichu, and finally I need you to also call seven genin teams, I don't care who they are. When you call them I need them to arrive in that order as well he ordered them as the four members vanished in sight. Naruto decided to be productive while waiting, and so he worked on his paperwork once again, after a while Shizune appeared with Wolf escorting here, we did as you were told Hokage-sama, we brought Shizune-san, and the others you called for are waiting in the lounge he said to the Hokage. Thank you Wolf Naruto said before the Anbu operative vanished and returned to his spot in the tower. The young Hokage then looked towards the young Jonin, when he glanced at Shizune he saw her smiling at him. Congratulations Naruto-kun, it seems that you actually did it, I knew you were going to be Hokage one day, but I didn't expect it to be this early. Naruto smiled at the woman he considered to be like an older sister to him, thank you Shizune ni chan I actually called you here today to ask you to be my assistant like you were to Ka-chan. Shizune looked slightly surprised at the offer, but then she smiled at the Hokage, of course Hokage-sama, I'll happily be your assistant, she chirped happily. Naruto smiled at her acceptance as he stood up to shake her hands, thank you, this really means a lot to me, and frankly I really need your help to organize things he told her sheepishly causing her to smile. Don't mention it Naruto, I am more than happy to be your assistant and secretary she assured him. That's great Shizune ni chan I guess we could begin tomorrow, for today I suggest or you to get some rest first before the job begins. Shizune nodded, I'll do just that Naruto-kun, see you tomorrow she said before exiting through the front door, but before she leave the office, Naruto called out to her. Shizune, before you leave could you please call in Konohamaru, Shikamaru, Genma, Anko, Ibiki and Awashi to come here. Of course Naruto-kun she replied. Naruto went back to his seat as he awaited the ninjas he called for, soon one by one they arrived, and Naruto smiled upon seeing them. What did you call us here for Gaki? Asked Anko as Ibiki groaned, Anko, this is our Hokage, he isn't the same person we met during the Chunin exams who actually became Hokage while staying Genin he said. The others snickered at this and Naruto himself was controlling himself to laugh. Konohamaru was also standing in the room, but he was admiring his boss in awe, he had finally become Hokage as he predicted, seeing Naruto as the Hokage made Konohamaru smile, this only strengthened his resolve to be the Nanadame Hokage. 
Naruto chuckled at the interactions of both Ibiki and Anko. He did not notice the look on Kinohamaru's face. Well actually I called you all here for certain reasons he told them as the six began to straighten out in front of the Hokage. I would like to congratulate each of you first and foremost, during my council meeting earlier today I spoke to the council about all six of you, and I nominated each of you for a promotion Naruto told them with a smile, the six ninjas were surprised by the news. Naruto then grabbed the six scrolls laid in front of his desk, each scroll contained the items and documentation for their promotions. Naruto handed each one to the six ninjas in front of him, Konohamaru was given a chunin scroll, Iwashi was given the Takibetsu jonin scroll, and Shikamaru, Ibiki, Anko and Genma were given the jonin scroll. Each gratefully accepted the scrolls gleefully, the happiest among the group were both Anko and Konohamaru. Both had large smiles plastered on their faces, the others merely smirked at their promotion. The Hokage then faked a cough to get their attention, the six straightened out and stood proudly as they listened to their Hokage, as you can see all of you have been promoted, I personally vouched for each of you to be promoted, and I firmly believe that all of you have what it takes to live up to your expectations. I know that all of you will exceed the expectations placed upon you as Chunin, Takubetsu Jonin and as Jonin he said. This may be troublesome Naruto, but thanks, I guess said the lazy Nara, Naruto merely rolled his eyes with amusement, he expected this kind of reaction from his friend. Still as lazy as ever he thought to himself, Konohamaru also stood proudly, thanks boss, you won't regret this. I know I won't Kono replied the blonde man, Naruto then stood up and looked at each of them, all of you are now dismissed, but Kono and Shika I need you two to stay here. The six nodded, Ibiki, Genma, Iwashi and Anko all left the office, while the two youngest ninjas of the six stayed behind, as Naruto ordered. So why do you need us here Naruto, or should I say Hokage-sama Shikamaru said with a smirk as he teased his old friend. Naruto groaned at the teasing of Shikamaru, I'm never going to get used to that, and you don't need to call me that, I'm too used to you calling me by my name. That goes for you as well Kono. He then looked the two straight in the eye, I actually also called you two here for different reasons, both important, though he admitted as the two ninjas looked intrigued. Naruto looked at Shikamaru first before he spoke with his lazy friend. Shikamaru, as you know I am Hokage, and I admit I still have a lot to work on, and honestly I'm learning as I go. This is why I need an advisor, you were the first person who came to mind when I thought about that, and to be honest, I could think of nobody better. The young Nara groaned, he had been expecting something such as this from Naruto, he thought about the pros and cons of the position of Hokage's advisors, he admitted that he could truly help Konoha as an advisor to Naruto. Shikamaru sighed, I'm just not sure Naruto, this position is just so troublesome. Naruto asked with a straight face before he gazed towards the newly promoted Jonin, Shikamaru, I know this job may be troublesome, but this is something both you and I must do. Asuma believed in you to protect the king, and this is the best way to do so without being Hokage. We're no longer carefree kids Shikamaru, we can't skip class with Kiba and Choji anymore, hell I'm responsible for the whole village, while well, you three are being groomed to lead your respective clans. We do not have the luxuries we used to have as kids, plus you don't have to go on much troublesome missions as the advisor. Shikamaru looked at Naruto slightly surprised, he thought about what he said, and he realized the blonde man was right, he began to chuckle at his friend's explanation. Meanwhile Konohamaru also looked at Naruto surprised at the serious eye he was showing, he was confused however, when Shikamaru began to chuckle. What's so funny? Naruto asked. I never thought I'd see the day when you would convince me what was right from wrong, I never even thought I'd see you as mature as you were just then he admitted as Naruto looked at his friend with a deadpan expression. So what'll be your answer Shikamaru? He grumbled in an annoyed tone. As troublesome as this may be, I guess you were also right. Count me in he said with a smirk on his face, Naruto grinned at the man and began to shake his hands. This is great Shikamaru, I guess we could begin tomorrow as well. Shizun already agreed to be my assistant and she will begin the same day as you he said, as Shikamaru nodded. Alright Naruto, if that's all then I guess I'll take my leave then. Naruto nodded, sure, no problem. See you tomorrow and don't be late he replied as Shikamaru left the office, now Naruto diverted his attention to Konohamaru. The Hokage looked at the young Sirotobi sheepishly, hey there Kono, sorry about that. No worries boss, being Hokage is a busy job, and I understand he said with a smile that could rival Naruto's. So what did you need boss? He asked, Naruto merely smiled proudly at his student as he patted him on the head, Konohamaru looked at his rival and boss in a surprised manner, and as he saw his face, he noticed a look of pride coming from him, the same look his grandfather gave him when he was younger. I heard about your heroics during the invasion, from what I heard you mastered what I thought you Kono. I really am proud of you he told him as Konohamaru began to blush at the praise. Arigato Naruto Nai-chan he told him as tears began to well in his eyes, he quickly lunged towards his older brother and cried on his chest, I was so scared Nai-chan, I thought I was going to die. Naruto was surprised at the sudden contact, he hugged Konohamaru back. 
Naruto knew what it felt to fear death, and he was close to it many times, he guessed Konohamaru was new to the feeling, and so he did his best to comfort him. You're not going to die anytime soon Konohamaru, not as long as I can help it. I mean who is going to replace me as Hokage one day. Konohamaru looked up at Naruto with a surprised expression, he wiped the tears of his face and stepped back from the hug. Konohamaru smiled back at his rival, you're right Nai-chan, I won't die until I become the Nanadame Hokage he told him with a renewed vigor. Naruto smiled at his younger counterpart, he walked over and ruffled his hair. I know you will be Hokage on day Kono, I have complete faith in you, but for now you're still a Chunin, I also have a possible B rank mission for you if you're interested. This will be your first mission as a Chunin he said. Konohamaru then forgot about his tears, he suddenly began to jump excitedly at the prospect of a high ranking mission worthy of his talents. Finally I get a mission worthy of me, so what's the mission? He asked with gleams in his eyes. Naruto chuckled at his reaction, he was reminded of himself when he was younger. He walked over to his desk and looked over the letters he wrote, he grabbed the one meant for Tizuna and handed it to Konohamaru. Kono, I need you to gather up your team and go to the Nami no Kuni. I need you four to deliver this letter to a man named Tizuna, he owns a building company. They were old friends of mine, when you give them the letter I also want you to escort them back to Konoha and act as their protection. Are we clear? Konohamaru nodded, the smile stayed on his face. Crystal he said confidently as Naruto nodded. Good, you're dismissed Kono. Good luck he said. Once Naruto was done talking with Konohamaru, he waited patiently for Yamato to arrive in his office. After waiting a few minutes the Mokuten user entered the office with a grin on his face, Naruto smiled at seeing his jonin captain, Yamato-sensei he greeted. Yamato shook his head amusingly, you don't need to call me Taichu anymore Hokage-sama, you outrank me now he said teasingly, plus my name isn't really Yamato, it's actually Tenzo. Naruto was surprised for a second, well okay then Tenzo he said, let's get back to business, I actually called you here to discuss the reconstruction of Konoha explained the Hokage. Tenzo nodded and was slightly surprised at Naruto's sudden seriousness, during my council meeting, we had to discuss the same topic, and during that time I recommended that you be the leader of the reconstruction project with me as the overseer, due to our Mokuten Keke Genkai he said, as he began to explain his whole plan to reconstruct Konoha to Yamato. Once Naruto finished explaining his overall plan to the former root member he noticed the slightly surprised look at his former captain, are we clear on that Tenzo? He asked. Hi Hokage-sama, I will do my best to lead the current project, replied the Mokuten user. Very good, I also called you here to inform you that I wrote letters to other leaders to seek help for our reconstruction, I will send the Genin team sometime later today, and I will update you on the matter. If all goes well the reconstruction of Konoha could be achieved much quicker than most anticipated explained the Hokage as Tenzo smiled at the good news. Well that pretty much all I wanted to talk about Tenzo, you're dismissed, said the young Hokage as Tenzo nodded, the Mokuten user then left the office leaving Naruto and his clones. Once Yamato left his office Naruto was left to his final duty for the day. He had to now send out genin teams of B-rank missions to either deliver important letters to world leaders or gather and purchase resources required for Konoha's restoration. He walked out of his office to the waiting room as he called the genin teams one by one, each of which were given a mission by Naruto. During the same time Konohamaru was already informing his team about their mission, his teammates were surprised to say the least when they saw Konohamaru in his new Chunin uniform. Once they were broken out of their shock the four quickly departed to Nami no Kuni in search of a drunk builder named Tizuna. Meanwhile, in the Hokage's office Naruto sent out one genin team to Sunagakur to ask Naruto's friend the Kazakiage for assistance for their repairs, another team was sent to Yukigakur in order to deliver Naruto's letter to the famed Kazuhana Koyuki, of course, the team was more than happy to partake in this mission, it wasn't every day you get the chance to meet a celebrity of her status. A third team was also sent out to deliver another letter, this time it was to Tori no Kuni's daimyo, Toki another old friend of Naruto and the current ruler of the land. Once after he debriefed that team another was also sent off on a mission, this time in search of Haruna, the daimyo of Na no Kuni. The fifth team was also given a similar mission, theirs was to head over to Yuta no Kuni to deliver Naruto's message to the daimyo of the land, Chikara. The sixth letter was sent to Shibuki, leader of Takigakur. The letter here was not only meant for help in the reconstruction effort, due to Takigakur's vast resources, the team was also sent to purchase wood and metals to help the village's repairs. And finally, one last letter had to be delivered. This final letter was to Shion, the priestess and leader of Oni no Kuni. He blushed as he remembered his encounter with her, he couldn't believe how dense he was back then, when he had agreed to make babies with Shion, without even understanding what she truly meant. He recalled a somewhat similar experience with Koyuki as well, he could only sigh at his past experiences with women, with the Minhanata, it only proved one thing about Naruto. He was as dense a rock, especially when it came to women and without his abilities, he would have remained that dense.
He shook his heads of such thoughts, after he sent those Genin teams away on those missions he called for some more, using the help of his Anbu. This time the Genin teams called to the office in order to travel to various areas such as Kusagakur and Yugakur to purchase resources for the reconstruction effort, the teams nodded and quickly left to fulfill their missions. With nothing left to do, he decided to go back to training with Sakura and left his clones to do the work. But before he went he told his Anbu two of you stay here, in case any emergency comes, and two with me at the Hokage training grounds. Akami, Wolf, and Tanuki, Badger, went with Naruto as Kumo, Spider, and Hayo, Panther, stayed behind. A no location. In a hidden base of the Akatsuki, Madara along with Team Taka patiently waiting for the return of Kisum and Zetsu, after a few hours the two arrived in the base as well. Kisum grinned manically upon seeing Sasuke, he was reminded of his old partner Itachi. Sasuke, Karen and Jugo paid the shark-like man no mind, Sajetsu on the other hand salivated as he noticed a legendary Samahata behind his back. Upon seeing the whole group finally gather together in the base, Madara faked a cough to gather their attention, the six noticed, and all looked at the masked man as if awaiting orders. Good, all of you are here. Kissum, I called you back because we need you for a much more important mission, we need you to help us attack the Five Cage Summit and capture the Naruto brat. Are we clear on that? Crystal replied Kissum, he had no problem with that whatsoever. In fact he was actually rather excited for the mission, it wasn't every day that you could attack all five of the cages at once. He was full of excitement to finally test his skills against ninjas of his caliber. Good, we have a month to go before the summit begins, and so for the next month I need all of us in pristine condition. You will all stay here in our base to train and prepare for our attack. Understood. The six ninjas all nodded at Madara orders, now any questions? He asked this time. This time nobody nodded their heads. Excellent, well you all stay here I must leave. Before we attack the summit I wish to recruit a member to our group, I believe he could be vital or our group he explained to the group as the six of them looked at their leader with curiosity. Who do you plan on recruiting? Sasu asked as he narrowed his eyes on the Maskechiha in front of them. The man you and your team are all familiar with actually, Yakushi Kabuto he said with a sinister smile, Sasu glared at the man upon the mention of that name. The name Kabuto sent shivers down the spines of Karen and Sajetsu, the two groaned upon hearing of Akatsuki's plans on including that man's name. Okami, anyone but that man. He gives me creeps as much as Orochimaru did Sajetsu thought to himself. Not that freak, first I have to deal with the water bastard now the snake freak as well. Kami probably hates me, I know it Karen frantically thought to herself. Sasuke meanwhile had no problem with the choice, though he did not like the man he had to admit he was a powerful ninjas and could be a valuable ally during their attack on the summit. Madara looked at the reactions of everyone, nobody seemed to disagree except for Karen and Sajetsu. He decided to begin his search for the snake and Danzo, Jana he told everybody before vanishing using his Jikikin ninjutsu. In trance of Konoha, the three Kumo ninjas Amoi, Samui and Kari, all stand shocked in front of the destruction which lay before them. Um Samui, is this really Konoha? Asked the confused Amoi. Samui looked just as bewildered as her two teammates, I think it is Amoi, I mean look at the Hokage monument she set as she pointed to the mountain with the carved faces of the Hokages. What the hell happened here? Yelled Kari. I don't know Kerry, but we should probably head over to the Hokage's office now replied Samui, both Kerry and Amoy nodded dumbly. The trio continued to walk up to the tower, as they walked around the ruins of Konoha, they couldn't help but wonder what had happened to Konoha, before they arrived here the five nations all acknowledged Konoha as the greatest power among them all, but now as they walked around the crater now known as Konoha, they couldn't help but wonder what kind of power or attack could have led to such destruction, and now that Konoha was in this state they also wondered who is now considered the most powerful nation from the five. As they made their way to the tower the people of Konoha looked at them strangely, there were whispers, murmurs and rumors floating around concerning their presence. The trio paid them no mind, after a few minutes they arrived in the tower, and they were met by the tower's receptionist. The receptionist showed them the directions to the Hokage's office, as they climbed up the stairs where they were met by Shizun, the brunette then led them to the Hokage's office. She knocked into the front of the door, but as no answer came, Spider came out and said Hokage-sama is at the training grounds, is anything important Shizun-san? asked a female Anbu. The Hokage's secretary replied yes Anbu-san, these three Kumonin carry a message from the Rakage, they would like to meet Hokage-sama. Kumo nodded as she and Panther went to the training grounds to get the Hokage, while the three ninjas were waiting in the lounge, Shizun decided to enlighten the three, you are probably wondering what happened to Konoha and who did this much damage to Konoha. The three nodded as Shizun answered, you see, a few days ago, we were attacked by the leader of Akatsuki, a person called Pain, 
he killed many of our ninja and destroyed our village using one jutsu, and he was the one who killed Jureya-sama the three were shocked, surely they expected the leader of an organization of s rank criminals to be strong, but not the strong, Shizun, watching their reactions, giggled a little before continuing to save the villagers, tsunade sama had to use all of her chakra, which put her in a coma, we expect her to be awake within three weeks, but the new Hokage arrived just in time and defeated Pain all by himself, which led to him being chosen as the new Hokage, the three were flabbergasted, someone who not even the legend Tsunade could defeat and kill the Gama Senen Jureya, was defeated by this new Hokage, and they were now more impatient to meet this new Hokage. The Hokage's training grounds. Naruto and Sakura were doing their physical exercises as five of Naruto's clones were working on Senjutsu, 50 of them were trying to reverse the flow of water in the river, 10 of them were on a wooden platform, trying to complete the last stage of futon manipulation, which was to make multiple cuts on the waterfall by one person or clone only. 100 of them were trying to burn a leaf with their chakra only, 100 were trying to make a leaf convert to dust by just their chakra only, 20 of them were working on learning new futon and mokuten jutsus, 20 of them working on tojutsu katas of Uzumaki clan, which consisted of feints and counters and was more of a defensive style, while 20 were working on Namika's clan style, which depended on speed and made use of both arms and legs equally. 20 were working on Kenjutsu Katas of Uzumaki clan, 10 of them were working on seals, Naruto was currently a level 7 seal master, and finally, 10 of them were working with one clone of Sakura on super strength techniques. 5 of Sakura's clones were working on burning a leaf, 5 were working alongside Naruto's clones at a river, and 9 were working on crumbling a leaf with just their chakra. The hidden Anbu members were mesmerized when they saw Naruto's method of training which was more than effective. Suddenly their Anbu counterparts came and informed them of the situation, which they relayed to Naruto, who said Sakura-chan, I have to go, something important has come up, Sakura nodded understanding Naruto's position and gave a kiss on the cheek as he left. Sakura then remembered something and said Naruto's clones, dispel yourselves twenty at a time at interval of two minutes, and shook her head at her lover's lack of organization. Naruto entered his office, he was wearing a long-sleeved black ninja t-shirt, a Kanoha Jonin flak jacket, ninja pants which were tucked into his black ninja boots, he had ninja tape and his kunai and shuriken holster around his right and left eyes, a Fuinjutsu kid on his right hip, medical kid on his left hip, his mother's katana on his right side of the waist, the Yamanaka clan katana on the left side of his waist, which was coated in poison and was chakra conductive. His mother's katana was also chakra conductive and made from the best metal from the Kaitate, Phoenix Valley, forged in the best armory in Yuzushi Agakur, and was on par with Akiri no Shinobi Gatana Shichin and Shu, seven swordsmen of the mist, and its special ability was to draw out water from the surroundings and leave a trail of water like a river. It was passed down in the line of ruler or clan head only, his mother being the last one, meant that her offspring was the next in line for the same. Everything was covered by a black cloak reaching his shins, which had the kanji and golden for sage on the back, he had taken the shoulder plates from the armor and had them on, he also had shin guards from his armor on him, he sealed his shadow clone summoning scroll on his left shoulder plate and Namaka's clan contract on his right shoulder plate, he had the toad contract on his back, and as he had not summoned the phoenixes and passed their test, so he was not their summoner as of now, so he kept the contract in a corner of his room, he had the Yuzumaki swirl on his left sleeve and Namaka's crest on his right one, and finally his black headband on. Upon entering the office the trio of Kumo ninjas had widened eyes as they saw the Hokage, he appeared to be a man their age, and he was accompanied by another man who looked just as young as he did. As Naruto sat in the chair he raised an eyebrow at his three visitors, Shikamaru was beside him acting as his new advisor, the two of them were surprised the Kumo ninjas were in Konoha seeking an audience with them. Thanks Shizun, your dismissed Naruto told his new secretary, Shizun bowed and left the room leaving the five ninjas alone. Naruto sensed their confusion, sighed and answered yes, I am the new Hokage, I defeated pain, and before you ask, I sensed you confusion, so tell me what message Rakage has for me. The Kumo trio widened their eyes watching his sensory abilities, Samui straightened up and said Hokage-sama my name is Samui, and I lead the three of us, I am a Jonin of Kumagakur, and my companions are both Chunin, the two of them are Amway and Kari. Naruto nodded and asked so, what message does the Rakage have for me Samui-san? It's about our common enemy Hokage-sama, the Akatsuki have attacked our sensei and the Rakage's brother, and they managed to capture him. He is the Jinchuriki of the Hachibi explained Samui as Naruto and Shikamaru both looked at her clearly shocked by the unfortunate news. Very well, I will help the best I can. We in Konoha have faced each of the Akatsuki members, at least from those we know of, and we have even managed to kill a few of them. Could you please tell me the members who attacked your sensei? He asked them as he grabbed the files on Akatsuki which were inside one of the drawers of his desk. We managed to identify only one of the members Hokage-sama, all in all there were four of them. That's odd, Akatsuki always go only by pairs, Shikamaru interjected. 
I agree, every time we encountered Akatsuki they came by pairs. So who was the member you identified? Asked Naruto as his curiosity was growing by the second. We recognized him as a missing nin of Konoha, Hokage-sama Samui said before breathing in a deep breath, it was Ichiha Sasuke. Naruto looked at her with widened eyes while his mouth was slightly agape, he flinched when he heard the name of his best friend, mentioned with the likes of the Akatsuki. Shikamaru glanced towards Naruto to see his reaction, and he noticed Naruto attempting to hide his emotions, but only failing in doing so. What did you say? Are you certain it was him? He asked frantically as she continually nodded. Hi Hokage-sama, he matched the description, and he even used his Sharingan she said. Naruto looked down on his desk, averting eye contact from the three Kumo ninjas, his mind and emotions were all over the place, he couldn't believe Sasuke had joined Akatsuki, it couldn't be the same Sasuke, but even though he continually attempted to deny it, in the back of his mind, he knew they were speaking the truth. The Kumo ninjas and Shikamaru looked at Naruto worriedly, he hadn't spoken for at least a couple of minutes, Naruto shook his head after he realized that the four other people in the room were staring at him questionably. He called Wolf and said Wolf, take these people to the Konoha archives and give them the records about Genin Ichiha Sasuke, take the root away from the Hayuga compound. The Anbu understood the hidden meaning and said hi, Hokage-sama. Now, is there anything else Samui-san? Asked Naruto. Samui nodded as she remembered the main purpose of their visit, actually yes Hokage-sama, the Rakage sent us here to inform you of a Go Cage, 5 Cage, Summit, he asks for you to be present in this event, and it is to take place at the end of the month in Tetsu no Kuni. The Tsuchikage, Kazakiage and the Mizukage have all accepted the invitation, all are waiting for you. Naruto soaked in the information, he nodded at the three of them. Tell him I'll be there, thank you he told them. The three Kumo ninjas bowed before the Hokage respectfully, Samui thanked Naruto on their behalf, and then the three left with Wolf to the archives. Once the three were gone Naruto sighed at the revelation, he slumped at the news of his best friend. With his current emotions being a mess, he looked under the desk and opened the lowest drawer, upon opening it Naruto smiled as he found the sake Tsunade had left. Naruto went in to grab it, but before he got there he suddenly couldn't move his body, he had forgotten about his advisor's presence in the room, usually I won't let you drink this early and on the job, but quite frankly after hearing the troublesome news, I think I need a drink myself Shikamaru admitted, he let go of his bind on Naruto, and the blonde young man brought out the sake in two cups, one for each of them. We can't get too drunk Naruto, we'll only drink a little. We cannot make this a habit Shikamaru warned Naruto, the Hokage nodded, and he prepared their drinks. Once the drinks were prepared both of them quickly drank their first glass, what do you think about all this Shikamaru? Honestly, first day on the job and it's already troublesome. If I was in your position I believe it's time to forget about your promise, Sasuke has made his choice Naruto. If I was you I would have given them the information they needed, but then again you're the Hokage and I'm just your advisor, the final decision will always be yours he told him firmly. You don't understand Shikamaru, it's more than a promise. He was like my brother, someone who understood what it meant to be lonely, although I don't think it matters much to Sakura about the promise, she happy with me, and she has genuine feelings for me, when I tell her and the others about this, no doubt they will lash out on Sasuke, but if it gets worse, there's only one thing I can do and I think that I would regret that for my whole life, and it will haunt me in my dreams. You tell the others about this, I have an important meeting today at 7. But that Naruto left once again for the training grounds as the memory of the clones hit him, he saw that Sakura had already left, and he had one one half hours before the meeting with Yamanaka clan. He went there and practiced both of his katas to make sure he knew them, he was still lacking a bit in the basic kinjutsu katas, but decided to ask advice from his Niko Nichan later, he was able to burn the whole leaf without a problem, he was also able to crumble a leaf to dust without a problem, and was able to reverse the water current for 2 minutes, it was good but not impressive, he decided to make the time limit of 10 minutes until proceeding to the next exercise, he was also able to make 4 cuts simultaneously in the waterfall, but for him that was not good, he decided that the number should be a minimum of 15. He then decided to test his super strength, he saw an earth wall roughly 10 feet high, 2 feet thick and 15 feet long, he then punched it using his super strength, and 7 feet high, 10 feet long and 1 feet thick section fell, he decided that he had to improve on that too. Next, he decided to test his sinjutsu, but instead of taking nature energy and maintaining a balance, he decided to take Kurama's advice. He took nature energy, but instead of using it as a separate source, he decided to flow nature energy through his chakra coils, it caused different markings to appear on his face, he had black lines running from his eyes to his ears, and a black dot inside of a black circle outline appeared on the center of his forehead, but was hidden by his headband. The black markings also covered his eyes like the toad sage mode, he now had a brown iris with a small white pupil in the center. An. Hashirama sage mode markings, look at the profile pic. 
Naruto felt different from when he was using the Toad Sage mode and decided to test it out. Earlier he needed minimum of one clone to make a Rasen Shuriken. But now he held out his hand a Rasen Shuriken began to form. It was the same size. And Naruto was able to throw it too. It was just as powerful. Naruto thanked Kurama and dispersed his Sage mode. He was able to enter Toad Sage mode in 30 seconds without clones and this new Sage mode in one minute. He decided to improve on that time too. He then went to the Hokage mansion to change, as he had a meeting in 45 minutes with the Yamanaka clan, after the Uzumaki Namaka's compounds were complete, he would move on there. He showered and changed, this time wearing his black-orange jumpsuit with the Hokage's robe on and his pouches, ninja tape and katanas, along with the Inuzuka fang necklace. He walked through the streets and saw that the reconstruction was going well because of his clones and Yamato spamming buildings. As he walked through the village, he saw people waving back to him, mothers asking him to kiss the foreheads of their babies and fangirls stalking him. He made his way to the Yamanaka flower shop. Yamanaka Ino was sitting and helping in her flower shop, she still had one hour to go and meet her Kanoha 11 friends for something important as Shikamaru said. The door opened and she saw Naruto enter, she immediately blushed when she saw him in that outfit, she also saw that he had the special katana of her clan on the left side of his waist. Naruto entered and saw Ino and sensed it again and asked was I really this dense when it came to girls Kurama. Yes, that Hyuga stalked you for years and was still stalking you, if I were in your position, I would have not regarded her feelings, she saw your suffering and did nothing as far as I remember answered Kurama. He thought on the inside if she would have loved me, then would have done at least something, it took me dying to make her confess her feelings, he looked at Ino and said hey Ino-chan, how are you doing? Ino broke out of her stupor and blushed heavily when she heard him say her name like that and answered oh h hey, Naruto-kun, what are you doing here? Naruto answered I have a meeting with your father, some clan matters, and before you ask no, I won't tell you, I don't want to spread SS class secret in the whole village. Ino pouted, which made Naruto blush and he thought out loud, even my puppy dog eyes jutsu is a failure in cuteness when you and Sakura-chan pout. Ino looked at him with a blush rapidly spreading on her face, Naruto looked confused, and Kurama enlightened him, you said that out loud Gaki. Naruto's eyes widened and he went to apologize, but Ino asked him did you mean it? Naruto looked at her and answered yes, of course I meant it he then looked at the time and said Ino, don't you have to go to that meeting that Shikamaru called? Ino replied yes and are you coming too? Naruto replied no, though it is something important and all of you need to make a decision on it, me and Shikamaru have already decided. Ino wondered what it could be as she saw Naruto leave with her father and went to change and get to the gathering herself. Naruto sat down opposite to Inoichi as he took out his father's letter and handed it to him, he knew what this was about, and he talked with Naruto about each business that Namikas owned, it turned out that 55% of business in Konoha and Hai no Kuni were owned by the Namikazes, he then told Naruto about Yuzushi Agakur and Naruto made a mental note to visit Yuzushio and gather anything left there, he then finalized everything, which included that the Namikazes will give the Amanakas rare herbs, flowers and poisons along with anti-toads, and allow them to research in the Namikas greenhouse, in return for managing the Namaka's businesses until Naruto reveals himself and the traders get to know him. He left the Yamanaka flower shop and wondered how his friends were taking the news of Sasuke's betrayal and what their decision on that matter was. He went to his office and told his Anbu and told them to gather the population of Konoha for an important announcement the day after tomorrow. Konoha 11 after they were assembled, Naruto's meeting still ongoing. Everyone sat there and looked at Shikamaru as he was the one who had called the meeting. When everything was settled, Shikamaru spoke up okay, even though no matter how much troublesome this is, I have really troublesome news, and it involves Naruto, Akatsuki and Sasuke. Everyone except Niji and Shino gasped when they heard this, their reaction was just a wide-eyed Niji and Shino, who were eager to hear what Shikamaru had to say. Before anyone could say anything Shikamaru continued, Sasuke became part of Akatsuki. Everyone seemed to gasp at this, Kiba shouted what the hell is going on? What on earth what on earth possessed Sasuke to join that organization? I don't know, but Akatsuki had managed to capture the eight-tailed host. You can already see where this is going. Shikamaru answered. Ino then spoke up, but that can't be right. Sasuke joined the same organization as his brother. The same organization that killed Asuma sensei Shikamaru sighed and continued, it wasn't the fact that Sasuke captured the eight-tailed host that served as the breaking point for a foreign village to move out. It was the fact that the eight-tailed host was the brother of the Reikage. You understand now? Sasu caused such an international uproar that the way I see it, Naruto has no choice but to play Sasu on the bingo book, lest he wants our village to go to war. Besides, I'd be damned if they take Naruto. This time, Shikamaru's expression turned grim. This time Kiba's fists were shaking, so it comes to this, then do we have a choice? Sasuke was our friend, but I'm not going to let him take Naruto. Shino replied, in his monotone, if persuasion through words cannot reach Sasuke anymore, then there's no helping it. 
I'd rather kill Sasuke than lose Naruto. W what's going to happen? Ino looked at Shikamaru in worry, Shikamaru grabbed one of his teacher's trench knives and gripped the handle as tight as he can. We're going to take care of Sasuke. It's bad enough that Naruto carries the burden for all of us, we can't rely on him forever. We need to grow up as well. Shikamaru said, it was then that Ino and Sakura started breaking down, Hinata remained silent in the whole ordeal. Sasuke is now liable for his actions, there's nothing that can be done Naruto and I have made our decision, we will give Sasuke one last chance, but if he denies that, then we will kill him Shikamaru said. Shikamaru looked up at Sakura and asked what are you going to do, Sakura. Sakura was quiet for a moment, but replied we have to face the reality, Sasuke has sunk in so much into darkness that none of us know, he was given everything, he had everything, but he betrayed us and our trust, I am not going to let any harm befall Naruto-kun, and I think it would be best if we killed him cause if Naruto-kun kills him, it would be something that will torment him his whole life, and he will eventually break down, Shikamaru smiled and said well said Sakura, Naruto can push Sasuke to the brink of death, but killing him is something that if he does, will break him and torment him, we will take care of Sasuke without Naruto, if he knows, he will again try to carry the burden for us. Everyone agreed and decided to do so, but before anyone could leave, Ino spoke out hey guys, Naruto-kun told me that he had some clan matters to attend to, do you know which clan Naruto belongs to? Shikamaru answered to her yes, the Uzumaki clan and probably the Namikas he added inside his mind, look up for it in the library, explaining is troublesome, but I can tell you one thing that they and Senju clan were cousins, everyone's eyes widened as they nodded and went home.